Where is Somebody, you hear? Yeah, you can do it. Okay. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Somebody put my computer on fast. I'd like to call the village of Weston trustee uh, board of trustees to order, excuse me. Fell stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America. America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Roll call, Sherry. Ermeline. She's absent and excused. Feeney. Here. Maloney. Here. Bynell. Here. White. Here. Zahn. Here. Zagami. Here. Okay. Thank you. Under uh, public comments, we've got several people that would like to speak, um, one virtually. So let's see, uh, I've got Matt Savage, you got recorded, not being here tonight. And then we go to um, Mitch King. Okay. Mitch, you want to speak at public comments? Yeah, I'd like to, and my Let's public just, uh, is... Just come on up and okay. then uh, state your name and address for the record. Mitch King, 6205 Municipal Street, Weston. Thank you. Um, I'd like to address the issue when you get to the Nick Avenue hearing or the Nick Avenue uh, portion of your meeting tonight. So you want me to talk now about it or I would really prefer to wait until the Nick Avenue portion so everything's fresh in people's mind. And, but I'll do whatever you prefer. I'm fine with that. Yep. Okay. Good. Thank you. Good. Okay. Thank you, Mitch. So that's going to be it next time. Um, do we have uh, Erica Erdman virtually? Erica, are you with us? Yes, I am. Hey. Um, Thank you. Erica, if you could just uh, state your name and address for the record, please. Um, sure. My name is Erica Erdman. Um, I live actually um, at 11650 South County Road K, Merrill. But um, the ad address for what um, we're talking about today is actually 3910 Schofield Ave. Um, site three um, in Weston. Um, so I um, was asked to uh, make a couple comments um, about item number 62 um, for Gigi's Playhouse asking for a donation of $380 for an event um, that we had on June 5th. So um, I can make, I can give some details now or um, like the gentleman before I can um, wait until we get to item 62 as well. That's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll do that too. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We'll bring you back up on 62. And then on, uh, let's see, public, uh, I've got uh, Karen Walker, uh, 5201 Apache Lane. Karen, you with us? Um, you wanna speak at this point? Just uh, you state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, my name is Karen Walker, 5201 Apache. And I was questioning the Apache, the vote on the Apache Lane project tonight. And at the last meeting on the 14th, they uh, talked about reducing the assessment that the village would pay the water and sewer mains. And in the uh, note we received regarding the meeting, nothing was mentioned about that whatsoever. So I don't want that to be forgotten or how did it get off or, you know, first they bring it up and then they say, no, or didn't say anything about it, I guess. So I was just wondering about that. So I don't know if that would be brought up at the time when you discuss the Apache lane. We want to do the same thing. And we, we've got two uh, public comments about Apache. We also have a Randy uh, Tabaka. Um, and which meeting are we talking about public works? Uh, yes, we are, uh, Mr. President and the um, and just giving the board and uh, members of the public background, the uh, the committee did not, or the recommendation of the committee was to go forward with the project with reduced engineering fees assessed towards the residents. Um, the uh, the committee did not uh, recommend reducing uh, the 
sewer and water assessment fees. Uh, Administrator Goner, do you concur? Yes. Okay. Uh, it was, we didn't, it was determined by the committee that uh, did not recommend taking out the, uh, the cost associated with the mains running the properties. Okay. Almost being referred to. Okay. But the engineering fees have been adjusted, uh, adjusted as shown in the report in the packet tonight. So the $17,424.59 fee will still go to every, those 24 people, 24 houses. This seems like it came out of nowhere. And then all of a sudden, big, 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 we're gonna vote on it to pass it. And I don't understand why, because it benefits the village. If you're planning on developing all the land <coughs> in Apache, North Apache. Just uh, just a point of order, Mr. Uh, Mr. President. If we're going to allow um, the uh, public to comment during that time period, then I would uh, prefer us not to engage back and forth. Yep. Okay. And this is really a public comment period where normally there's no discussion back and forth. It's just for allow you. But I think during that process, I think that's when we'll have this better time. time. And okay, um, thank yep, thank you. And uh, Mr. Um, Randy Tabaka, do you choose to do the same thing? I'll do the same thing. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, any more public comments uh, from in the audience or virtually? Who's watching the computer uh, today? You are? Okay. Everything good? No hands up? No hands up. Any other uh, public comments? Uh, anybody want to discuss anything or make a statement uh, here in person or on social media? Hearing none, let's move on to number four, public hearing. Uh, open the hearing and hear comments. Uh, consider amending the future land use map found in map 3-1 of volume 2 vision and direction of the village's comprehensive plan for 8111 Bird Street and two unaddressed adjoining parcels. That would be me. Okay. I'm the Hold neighbor. Up. Would you like to step up to the <clears throat> mic and just state your name and address for the record, please? I'm Guy Gogger. I own the property to the south and east of the Hinner Springs project. And there's always been controversy. My parents owned the land before me for the 45 years been, I've been associated with that property. There's always been a struggle with that property line. And I'm just here to make sure that my driveway and access to my land will always be the same. Michael? Yeah, I mean, looking at the Flat. I mean, it doesn't look like the the driveway is going to be impacted. You know, the land's platted for that subdivision are north of there. You know, so. Okay, okay. that was my concern. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, this is going to be the quickest opening and closing of a public hearing I think we've ever done. <laughs> Close the hearing. Closing the hearing. Uh, action. Number 21-016, an ordinance to adopt components of the village's comprehensive plan, consisting of amendments to the future land use map found in map 3-1 in volume two, vision and direction. So moved. Moved by Zong, second, second by Feeney. Anything else on the discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So carry minutes from the previous meetings, number seven, 517, 2021, Board of Trustees meeting. Move to uh, move to package and approve items seven and eight concurrently. Okay, we have a motion to uh, approve seven and eight concurrently. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second by White. Anything on the discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Reports minutes from boards, committees, and commissions. 13, finance. <clears throat> Move to acknowledge um, 13, 14, 18, and 20. Motion to acknowledge 13, 14, 18, and 20 by Zong. Second. Second by Feeney. On the discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Reports from departments, 22, administrator. Um, I mentioned in my report that we are planning, or want to plan a groundbreaking ceremony for the new municipal facility. We've kind of targeted July 13th, that's a Tuesday, as the day. 
Um, is there any thoughts on it one way or the other by the board? I guess that we tried to stay away from, or wanted to stay away from the 4th of July week. Uh, but I think there's supposed to be activity starting up at the site uh, around that time. So uh, we'll probably hold that in the morning. And was I guess another suggestion was maybe holding it before one of the board's regular meetings. That would be the following Monday, if that were the case. But um, does the board have a preference? Uh, I'd actually prefer to do it before one of the regular meetings and also not during the typical work day so that I could attend. Anybody else? I just say if, if more than if more, a quorum are going to be attend, we have to agenda it. Right. right. E? Um, I, I would be fine with the 12th or the 19th. Um, are, are you think uh, going off uh, Trustee Feeney's comments, are you thinking like five o'clock? Is that going to be OK or is that going to be a problem? Uh, I could do any time after 4.30. Yeah, I, I'm I'm flexible on the uh, 12th or 19th, but the sooner I can get on my schedule, the better. Roshane? I'm good. Yep, Thank Steve? You. I'm fine. I, I just think um, this will mean a lot to Barb. So I think we got to make sure with Barb, too, so that she can okay. attend. But I'm, I'm fine and flexible, so I think that'd be fine. All right. I guess, uh, let's say the 19th would be the third Monday. Yeah, the third. It's uh, uh, that, would, that would be also finance committee that night as well. So, all right. I, I guess we would also probably. I think like, there's also a, another meeting before that too. Yeah. Tourism, tourism, yeah. tourism, yeah. Public works and plan commission are both on uh, prior week. Uh, I'm sorry. Five o'clock on the thirteenth. I can. Yep. Let's see first at six if we can finish before. Yeah, if we can finish before six. I have another meeting. Prior to that, right here. Just take a dark. You want to do a doodle poll or something? Sure, we can do that. Yeah, check with Barb, though. When, right. um, she's with family this week. I don't know how accessible right. she is, but okay. Uh, okay. And then I would presume we'd also want to invite building committee members to that mm -hmm. groundbreaking as well. So we'll put the other list of invitees as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Exactly all I have. There's a lot of things on the agenda okay. tonight that we will have okay. some discussion on. Sure. Uh, 23, clerk, anything? Uh, no comments right? here, but I do have a couple of comments under one of my ordinances further on down the agenda. Okay. Uh, 24, finance, Jessica? Nothing to add. Okay, thanks for me winning the bet. Uh, nothing, uh, 25, fire and EMS, uh, Matt uh, is excused. 26, parks, Sean? Yeah, I did have a uh, report in the packet. Um, school's been very busy. Um, we were closed today, of course, due to the cold weather. Um, but otherwise, <coughs> busy. we've had multiple special special events or groups. And we had a, a customer appreciation day for Dunner Construction last Thursday. Um, Everest Track and Field has used the pool two mornings already. They're using it a third morning. Um, we had a photographer use the pool for senior pictures, underwater senior pictures last week also. Um, we've had an uh, evening Evening rental last Friday night um, went very well. We had actually another one scheduled tonight. Um, so we've been very busy even outside of the normal operating hours. Um, and we've, I think, hosted at least three birthday parties and we have several more on the books um, right now. So um, just trying to balance staffing and all those special, special events. So. Um, we're also in our first session of swim lessons. They started last Monday, um, so they go two weeks. The, typically, we go through this Friday, and then we have a break, a week in between for the next session. We also use that week for makeup lessons, which so there was no lessons today, so more than likely we'll have a, a session next Monday. Um, and they're very full. Um, first session, second session, third session has some room. That's the one late July, early August. Um, so. Um, I guess we're going to expect things to continue to be very busy. Is that um, up on the lessons because of the Y, the partnership with the Y? Um, no, we typically fill our lessons pretty full. Um, we did add a second level two to all of our sessions due to the high demand for that for that level. Um, so we actually are running five five levels at one time uh, per session. So, um, and we have people on the waiting list right now for certain levels trying to get in and. Um, 
you know, we're trying to be accommodating, add an extra class if you can, but that's an additional instructor, of course, we're adding. So um, just being conscientious of, uh, you know, making sure we give the students uh, their time worth too, because you hate to add more, more than eight students to each class, uh, just because there's only one instructor with them too. And um, so, but. Thank you. Is there any trouble with um, filling shifts and um, the same way that there was uh, uh, back when I was there, lifeguards taking off and some slips hanging out forever? Um, well, since uh, utilizing the Y, they actually use uh, a program called Shiftboard. Oh, okay. Um, so everything's done electronically. So I don't even see what's going on as far as the, the shifts uh, changing hands and stuff like that. But I mean, we have been staffed fine, um, with the exception of Saturday, we were a little lower staffed, um, just as um, due to availability. Um, but we, I mean, we had plenty of staff to have the pool wide open. It was just not, they may have had to work from 11 to eight instead of a, an 11 to four shift. And then, you know, a one to six and um, where we split the ships out through the day. So, um, but uh, yeah, they've been getting plenty of hours um, Think they enjoyed the pool day today so good thank you um 28 refuse and recycling update any comments or discussion uh, let's go to 27. plenty and tell oh, sorry jen anything more to add okay let's go to 28 refuse <laughs> refuse and recycling update <clears throat> second round uh 29 police department oh Deep valerie's police. online I think. oh valerie i'm sorry valerie yeah. You have anything to add? Only, only if you guys have any questions. Okay. Sounds like you're busy. Any, any questions? Yeah, very much so. Thank you, Valerie. Yeah. Uh, 29, Chief. Uh, real quickly, we had 1,640 calls for service in the month of May. Of those, 1,182 were in the village of Weston. Uh, just a brief staffing update. We're still trying to find qualified applicants to fill vacancies. Uh, we're struggling to uh, keep minimum staffing due to our vacancies, so we're running a little bit over in our overtime budget, which is expected. We interviewed two more candidates this week. Uh, we have two in field training, and we're currently doing a background on another. So that's all I have unless there's questions for Thank me. you. Any questions for Chief? Uh, Chief, uh, I did, um, not, not just for your own edification, but for the rest of the board. I know that you and I have talked at some length about the possible about the possibility of entertaining uh, combining EMPD and Rothschild. I spoke at the Rothschild um, Village uh, Village Board meeting last week, and uh, there's they seem to be open to the idea. And Sheriff Parks uh, is also very supportive of the idea. Uh, not uh, not least of which would dramatically increase uh, communication and cooperation. So positive initial signs. Okay. Uh, 30 nothing for you, Michael. I mean, it didn't get blued in the yep. packet, but, oh, but you are blued it is in there. You are blued? I am. Okay. Um, in the update or add? Um, no, I guess just a lot of the Yep. A lot of the capital projects are in various phases. Mm -hmm. okay. If you will okay. tend to items later on. So. Okay. 31. Nate, are you on board? He is not. He is not. So nothing for tech. Uh, work product submittals. Acknowledge? Move to acknowledge items 32 and 33 concurrently. Motion to acknowledge 32 and 33 concurrently. I'll second that. Second by Minel. Anything on the discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Consent agenda. How do you wanna? I have a question, Mr. Chairman. Yes. On some of these licenses, I see that like there's motel, hotel license for only Fairfield Inn and Suites. We have others. Are there other licenses that are coming in? No, because we've had these items on the agenda for the last three meetings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we started, yep. So we're getting them in groups? Yes. Okay. Correct. Okay. So this should be it. Okay, thank you. 
Do they come back in groups or do we send out in groups? I, what do you mean? Well, I mean, do we send them all out at the same time and then some just don't no, get she's back? No, she's been sending them out oh, I see. board approves them. Okay, got it. Yep. Okay. Less work to do at one yeah. time. Yep, okay. Mr. Chairman, there's one item under 38 where uh, it talks about uh, contingent upon paying personal property taxes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we, I think whoever makes the motion may want to make sure that that- Pull 38 out. Yes, we could pull that out, please. Or that, what you're thinking? Okay. Would you care to start off? Um, I move to approve consent items except uh, item 38. Second. Motion by White to approve the consent agenda, um, holding off 38 and uh, seconded by Feeney. Any more on the discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. And now let's address 38. Okay. I move to approve the 2021. 2022 kennel license for playful paws with the contingency of paying personal property taxes. Second. Motion by White, a second by Feeney. Question. Yeah, question by uh, Song. Um, did the, uh, ha have we ever actually made contact with um, representatives from Playful Paul's Kennel? I, don't I believe they actually paid it today, but. Okay. okay, perfect. So good. Right. No questions from me, by the way. Okay, any more in the discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Ordinances, number 44, ordinance number 21-007, an ordinance to approve the rezoning of a parcel of land from AR Agricultural and Residential and RR-5 Rural Residential 5 to SF-S Single Family Residential Small Lot 2F Two Family Residential and MF Multifamily Residential located at 8111 Bird Street and two adjoining unaddressed parcels. I move to approve ordinance uh, 21007, a rezone request for 8111 Bird Street and two uh, unaddressed adjoining parcels. Motion by Feeney. Second. Second by White. On the discussion, any more discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. 45, ordinance number 21-009. An ordinance to amend Chapter 4, Video and Cable Television Service Providers Fee. Mr. Chairman, I this is the first time I've heard about this. A real short Reader's Digest version of the, how this came about. Um, yes. Um, Jonna came to me and said that our ordinance did not match our schedule of fees. So we revised the ordinance so that we do not have to go back and always change the ordinance. We only that. need to change the schedule of fees right. any times anytime that fee would change. Okay. Future. Thank you. Okay. Um, we're waiting for a motion, correct? Yes. Okay. I'll move to approve ordinance number 21-009, amending section 4.300 at sub one video service provider fees. Second. Motion by White, second by Feeney. Um, there's only one thing I want to correct on the um, on the document, though. Um, under on page 382, my name is Yi Lang Zhang, not Li Yang Zhang. Just want to correct that. Okay. So noted. Any more in the discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. So carried. 46, ordinance number 21-014, an ordinance to amend section 6.104, parent 5, issuance of alcohol beverage licenses. I just have something to add. Mm -hmm. I did hear back from the League of Municipalities today. Mm -hmm. I did send them the ordinance for review. Of course, they cannot give us a legal opinion, but they happily reviewed the ordinance and gave me a couple changes. On, um, or suggested a couple changes. On page four, and I didn't catch it the first time around, on page four of the ordinance, yep. under where it says, what is a habitual law offender? In parentheses, it says, you kind of look in the middle of the paragraph, it says for pending charges. Um, 
their suggestion was to move that since we are addressing the pending changes under guideline four. So that was one change that they recommended. That would and be then, a strike? Yeah, so it'd strike through that language there. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then under, um, and we don't have to change this now. This is something that we can look at in the future. But under. Um, I bless you. Thank you. Um, page. Let me find the page here. Under guideline seven, and this wasn't anything that I was even looking at changing, but she read over it and, and said under guideline seven, under items one and two, um, there, she recommended that we might want to look at changing that language because she didn't think we should just deny somebody a license um, without maybe giving them sort of some sort of due process if they fail to complete their application correctly. So she thought we might want to look at changing that language and not exactly sure how we want to change that as of just yet, since I just talked to her at three o'clock this afternoon. Mm -hmm. But I think that's something that I can look at and change for the next meeting. I think it's something attorney can Is that covered under three, Sherry? No, because um, no, because one three is different than one and two. Okay. Um, if you if you read one, it says um, false. Yeah, if they if they provide false information. Number two is if they intentionally omit. Number three is. Um, due to a mistake or whatever. Um, so one and three is different from one and two. Correct. So she's not questioning number three at all. She, was, she said she was fine with that, but she was concerned on about due process on one and two. So two, how do you determine intent to like falsify? She, doesn't think, she thinks maybe we should Just give them the same opportunity as someone else if we would deny it that we allow them to come back to the board and why did they why did they miss that information on their application type thing but but i mean number three is saying that if the village clerk or the police chief determines the information was omitted from application due to a mistake and excusable neglect and then we would be able to allow them give them an opportunity to submit the corrected application isn't that I, I guess i'm going back to what um, uh, trustee white is saying I, I i feel that covers it that's just my thoughts here obviously claire silverman from the league yeah that was her recommendation that we change something on one and two it's well in a nutshell is it just saying that if we see a, an issue on one and two we should get back to them ask them if they want to change it or correct the copy yeah. Even before it comes here, and then give them that chance. That's the due process that she's talking about. You know, and maybe and then run it through. And maybe it's just a matter of eliminating one and two, and just leaving three. I, I, I well, in essence, you would be because you'd be right. checking back with them. Right. Yeah. But yeah. you give them an opportunity to appeal it for a decision. Right. That was kind of her suggestion. They have that was a right to appeal the decision. Mm -hmm. I think you could probably add that. A sentence under one and two, if, if that's what they feel would qualify. Yeah. However, applicant may appeal this to the right. Should, board. Should we table this and give it a month? That, yeah. Since you just um, got the information this afternoon. Well, everything else in the ordinance is okay, you know, with the other changes, except for that was a whole different subject. I was only trying to revise the Fair Employment Act stuff and the pending charges and the rehabilitation language. That's all in there. That was all proposed. She was all fine with that. And this was like a whole nother subject that we got onto. So, I mean, I guess if Clay is okay with it, because he's trying to follow these guidelines when, you know, they're reviewing applications. So if he's fine with waiting another month, I'm fine with it too. Dusty White? I think if we approve it pending legal review, that will cover in case we have changes that we need to make. And at least that's my opinion. Well, and since you called on something else and then this was brought up, right. we could leave it alone. And then with what right. Trustee White said, exactly, get an opinion afterwards. Right. Okay. Was there anything else? 
Oh, oh, that was that's a pretty good job. Okay. Hey. Chief Schultz, do you have an opinion on this? Well, I think we've been working well together, kind of looking at it case by case, understanding that the ordinance has to be updated, and we've been kind of following that, giving them the benefit of the doubt. Right. You know, it's not written, so um, I'm fine with okay. what being. Is everyone clear on what we're going to be doing here and what we're going to be approving? Okay. So a motion in order would be in order for 46. I'll move to approve ordinance number 21-014, amending section 6.105 paren 5, issuance of alcohol beverage license pending legal review. I'll second it. Motion by White, second by Zong. Just another comment. Yep. Um, name change as well too. It is Lee on okay. there as well. So just want to make that change. Thank okay. You. Noted? Yep. Any more in the discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. 47. Ordinance number 21-015. An ordinance to approve the rezoning of a parcel of land from B3 general business to B1 neighborhood business located at 6610 Schofield Avenue. I'll move to approve ordinance number 21-015, a rezone request for 6610 Schofield Avenue for Planning Commission recommendation. Second. Motion by White, second by Feeney. On the discussion. Any more on the discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. 48. Ordinance number 21-017, an ordinance repealing Chapter 62 Planning Commission and amending, renaming, and recreating Chapter 62 Plan Commission, appointment of Plan Commission alternates one and two. Does everyone understand what we're trying to do here? Okay. So all we're doing is creating the two alternate members. Correct. We, do, we do not actually have any nominees for those alternate positions. Correct. All right. Yep. I would assume uh, that will come at a later meeting. Right. Yep. Uh, is that at the end of this? There's a little at the end to there's an option they're, at they're the not end. named on the agenda, but if yep. there was some mm -hmm. idea about it, okay. those appointees might be. So if if we appoint a, a sitting trustee, they would certainly not get paid. And if we appoint somebody other than a trustee, they would get paid being an alternate. Perfect. Some if someone does not show up on the plan commission, then they would be moved in. Alternate one would come first, and if there was a need for two, then the second one would come in. So the, the whole thought on this is to keep them update, updated on what's happening because it's a pretty intense uh, commission. And I think okay. the other circumstance could be if a member would have to be, would have to recuse themselves yep. from a issue. Then a false below quorum. Right. Or false below quorum. quorum, exactly. Right. And then have the continuity of right. people that are familiar with things instead of having, you know, if there is transition. Mm -hmm. of membership and at least have people that are familiar with what's happening in the plan commission and what their role is mm -hmm. uh, okay i move to approve ordinance 27-017 21-017 yep right you said 27 21 yep dash 017 yeah. okay thank you second. uh motion by feeney second by minel any more on the discussion hearing none all those in favor say aye aye, aye. Opposed? So carried. Number 49, ordinance number 21-018. An ordinance to amend article 18-1X mobile food vendors, section 18.148 mobile food vendors license. Um, if you read my um, RFC, I, I, all my comments are in red and I, I try to, um, I, I tried to catch everything. Um, Jim Pinsonold's concerns, his comment, his comments. The only thing that I was unsure of um, is, and I can't remember what item number it is, but it has to do with language in the zoning code related to adjacent property owners. And his example that he gives is you have a mobile food vendor sitting at Ace Hardware. They're selling something that the deli is selling at pick and, uh, pick and save. Do they need to get permission from pick and save? Because that's how the zoning ordinance reads right now. 
I don't know what you want to do with that. Um, to be totally honest with you, we were not requiring them to get that kind of authorization. We were just requiring them to get authorization from the property that they were located on or that they wanted to locate on. Um, so they're sitting, a food vendor is sitting at anywhere other than pick and save and they're selling something at pick and save or a like item from any other yes, vendor. Right. And we would go and ask them permission. I, I would come down on that as no. I don't believe we, I think what we need, we, we need this whole ordinance is about protecting the community on food safety issues only. So somebody comes up from the South and has crab legs. We need to assure that those crab legs were, were in uh, the cool point, the cool protection all the way here and not turned off for a day and a half and then turned back on. So those are the things that we need to worry about with uh, the Marathon County Health Department or whatever. So if, if it's a like item being sold somewhere else, we can't protect that. I, I don't believe that's our role. Trustee White. I have to commend you for working on this project and reading through your comments in the back and forth. There was a lot of information that, that you had to work your way through. And believe it or not, I think Jim did a good job too because he raised questions that the ordinary person would raise right. that we would have, as a group would, wouldn't even think of. Um, the the thing the comment about notifying you could have two grocery stores next to each other and they'd have to have permission to sell their groceries, so I guess that kind of stretches the limit. Uh, I, I realize it was a, it was a I think the, the and the motive behind it was anti-competitive, so they didn't and we used to get that on a regular basis, but um, I think there's room for it in there. We're not here to protect businesses. We're here, well, yes, but but not for what they sell, but we're here to com com uh, protect the health and safety. I think that's the, the paramount reason on the certification on food trucks. And, you know, we've learned a lot of things here through this whole process. I mean, I thought Marathon County had to have certification too, but Lincoln County, I think there's a, wasn't any, a, county. any county in the city, any, any county. Yes. So that's, that's something I learned. I didn't know that. So good, good job. So the only thing then with that language uh, would be three adjacent property owners. Mm -hmm. That would be a revision that would need to be made to the zoning code. Cause it's nowhere in this ordinance. It, that language only exists in the zoning code. Main chapter 94. Our favorite chapter. Yeah, <laughs> big time. Okay. Uh, I move to approve Ordinance 21 018, amending section 18.148 of the, or 18.148 mobile food vendors license. Motion by Feeney. Second. Second by Hushang. On the discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So carry. Comment, Mr. Chairman. Are we going to get together with the Planning Commission to fix the zoning so we? John, would be happy to propose <laughs> yes. um, sure. an ordinance amendment to that. That would be great. If she doesn't have time, I can work on that. Okay, thank you. We'll okay. figure it out. Okay. Thank you. Resolutions number 50, resolutions number 2021-016, recommending approval of the Compliance Maintenance Annual Report, CMAR, for Western Sewer Utility. Move to approve. Second, move to approve by Zagami, second by Feeney. On the discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. 51, resolution number 2021-017, authorizing Resolution for special assessments for driveway approach, water and sanitary sewer improvements for the Apache Lane utility project. Uh, before we uh, get started in earnest, Administrator Donner, you said that um, that these numbers were revised uh, based on Public Works's recommendation. Um, I guess Virgil Adolski can address that question. Yeah, so. Understanding is it was changed? Yep. Okay. Um, so on Monday, the Public Works Committee made the 
last week, Monday the 14th, the Public Works Committee made the recommendation to uh, remove the, um, the engineering costs associated with the project. And then um, during that process too, it was also found that there was a, an error in the Excel spreadsheet where it was only adding up uh, 22 of the lots instead of 23 laterals. So um, I guess those changes were made. Uh, so I, the table on the screen shows, you know, the sanitary sewer improvement went from uh, initially a 78.14 per lot to a 65.56. Um, the, the other big one was in the water improvements from 9,600 to uh, a little over 8,000. So uh, in total, the cost for that sewer water per lot went from just under 22,000 at 21,990.18 to uh, 18,604.26, which was a reduction of 3,385.92 per lot. So that includes the engineering fee and the mistake was that Correct, yeah, so that um, corrected or removed the engineering fee from the calculation and then also- uh, How much was that? The engineering fee? <laughs> um, Wasn't that about a 13%? Reduction in yeah, so the initial engineering um, costs were uh, accessible. It was 27800 for the uh, design and 39700 for um, construction. Or wait, I have those backwards. Um, oh, no, 22700 and 39700 um, So then in the amended version here, um, $70,000 reduction. Yeah, so it's a $70,000 reduction. So then in the amended version, those costs are removed. Okay, take care. Yep. Mr. Chairman, point yes. of order? Yes. I believe we have people in the yep. office. I got it right now. Okay, thank you. Just wanted to I just don't know when, when you want to add them in. So I, I thought we'd get a little bit more information out. That's fine. Have That's them both address. So um, I attended that meeting and, and listening uh, to Shane here and, and Michael, so anything involving, other than the scope of, of those direct addresses that was the entire project on the engineering was labeled as such and then removed. And then also the, it was only an eight inch of pipe, right? Am I Correct. understanding this? And even though it's a larger pipe, it's only being charged to the residents at an eight inch level and all the rest is going to the rest of the community. Correct? Correct. Okay, all right. Those are those are two things. Yep. Correct. So but, charge you know the, the philosophy with eight inches. Yep. If they were going to provide the service to that area, they were not going to do looping. Right. That eight That'd inch be it. That, must yep. go in there. Yep. So and so that's appropriate. Um, okay. And then I was that the two. Was there one more? They did not ass assess for the lift station. That's right. Okay. The lift station is a different project, yep. and no, because there's no legal benefits to that then it's then it can't be assessed to the uh to the property owners is my understanding correct uh director what else you well yeah kind of so if you're serving a new area with a lift station or some other improvement i guess it's like this is there a capacity assessment or we built in extra capacity in the system and people are paying that back with a connection fee if you know um you can make a case for special assessing a lift station. I would not. We're not. That's not the. That's not being done in this. Okay. Case. Thank you. And okay. Yeah. Who's saying? There is two engineering fee here. One is the design fee. Mm -hmm. The other one's construction inspection fee. Mm -hmm. So I think they took both of them off. Yep. The yep. Okay. And, and that's what we talked about that night under public works. Correct. Okay. So right around seventy thousand. Seventy thousand dollars. Right. That's correct. Okay, um, I'm gonna um, address Randy Tabaka first because he didn't get an opportunity last time. So Randy, if you could just come to the podium and just state your name and address for the record, please. Hi, my name is Randy Tabaka. I live at 5203 Apache Lane. I apologize I couldn't make it to the last few meetings. I do have some concerns about the Apache Lane and the pumping station project. Uh, one of the concerns is there's no more room for development on Apache Lane, okay? So this project that's proposed, 
I don't really understand because I get mixed comments from people where the lift station's being put in as a backup in case Ross Avenue would ever fail, okay? Now the comment was just made just now that with the lift station on Ryan and Apache, that is for, I mean, that's not assessed to us as property owners. I guess that's a separate project. I don't know if that's being covered by the COVID fund or not. It's being covered by the general revenues of the sewer yep. My recommendation would be that, you know, if this is for village further development down the road, why are we being assessed, you know, $18,000? They're not including all the residents in our subdivision to actually do this. And what bothers me is we have a lot of retired people in our community. We have a lot of young families that are starting out. You guys are really putting a financial burden on a lot of people. And if the pumping station is for backup in case of failure on Ross Avenue, the way I understood it, Mike, can you clarify that? The water main is there. The, the, the sanitary sewers to serve that area and any future area that would flow by gravity to that station. So the, the, the lift station, the pumping station is, I guess it's, is there just because the sewer in that area would flow that way. But the, the water main is really the looping of the water system. So that's so what happens in the subdivision over by Tappy off of the, the roundabout. Yeah. So if that system would ever fail, what would this system have to do with it? The lift station would do nothing for sanitary sewer because everything flows by gravity. But it would have something to do with water. The water system would loop. So why didn't this go out on a referendum for the taxpayers of Weston on a referendum to also include the growth of the village of Weston because that's what's going to happen. You're going to see future growth, future developments with developers. I've been in the plumbing industry for 42 years. I, I think you're putting a lot of burden on 22 to 24 residents. And I think it should be more, you know, if it's a water supply issue, like Mike's saying, you know, you got all the Swiderski apartments over there, you got other apartments over there. I, I don't feel that it's being fairly shaken out. And right now to do construction, material costs have probably went up 80 to 100% or more. This is really not the best time to be purchasing water and well supplies. And I, I wish I could have made it to some of the other meetings because I'm sure some of these topics were probably covered. But I think you guys, before you vote on this, should really think of the taxpayers in our small subdivision that we are down there to the growth that's going to happen probably all the way out to the soccer fields on Ross Avenue. Eventually all that farmland will be growth. And I'm sure that's why this is being sized up with piping. You know, from going to eight to 12 inch, you can handle a lot of sewage. So I really think before this is voted on, please think of the people in our subdivision. <coughs> Thank you for your time. Thank you, Andy. Director Rodolski, um, maybe because this has been hashed out, or not hashed out, but discussed um, at the Public Works um, Committee meeting beforehand and at the Public Information meeting beforehand, um, could you maybe give a 30, like a, a short um, bullet point on why we can't uh, increase the legal benefit size and some of the other points that the gentleman brought up? Are you, are you talking about the other residents? Yeah. Well, the other residents, I mean, we, we could make this project bigger. I mean, and, and encompass the whole thing, but we're right. just like the, the, the legal, eventually it will. Yeah, the legal reason why we can't. That's it. Not sure what, there's no yeah. reason. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 the, the legal definition of benefits. Um, like it, I don't want to. Or so maybe I guess the way to address your question, we're trying to 
have some consistency in how we charge for the improvements that's going to be are going to be provided to these properties as we and as we reference we have you know there's a statement that the project is benefiting these properties that we're fronting with the water and sewer mains right and the benefit i guess under the legal description that if you look at the look at special assessments in wisconsin on the league website and such they you know the, the concept of benefit means that these properties have something provided to them that gives them an advantage that other properties that don't have that benefit or that improvement um there so you know there's the option to tap on the municipal public sewer and water on the failure of their septic system we have, we have tried to make this more or less onerous if you will i know there's a charge involved by giving the 10-year deferment i guess that are we're going to talk about this later i guess that our attorney recommends we we change our ordinance to say that we are that we do specifically allow deferrals we we can do that by law anyway but he recommends we make that change in our ordinance yet um so we're, we pro propose this 10-year window of deferral where people would not have to start paying for the assessment until year 10. now whether you want to entertain consideration of, of conditions under which that could be extended that you know we could you could still discuss that and have us look into that before a, a resolution is adopted or as we consider amending the engineer's report so i don't know i'm getting off on a t engineer maybe but yes the concept of benefit is these properties have public storm water available on completion of the project we are not saying that i guess it's going to be a, it's going to be stated as a lien on the property at some point there's a replacement of, of a private system that's going to be involved in these properties too so we're trying to make some balance here i think between when does that happen um i don't you know i guess we've, we've kind of agonized over how this whole thing is going to work internally as we thought about our main extension policy and how to do this project so i guess we'd hope this would be a compromise that would be acceptable to everybody but i, I know it's a it's a very difficult thing for it's easy for me to talk about i know the people that are affected it certainly is much more of a of an impact thank you Lord. Mr. Donner, you were director of public works prior to this, and we've had projects that where we've done this very same thing, and we have assessed for sewer water. Is that correct? Right, sewer water, curb and gutter. So if if we change policy down the road, we'd have to do the same thing for any place else where we do sewer and water where there has not been any in the past. We'd have to. I would think and, it would be taking the task on that. Yeah, and it's my understanding that it would. It would be nearly impossible to recover the cost of putting in sewer and water from the revenue from sale of water and the and the charging for sanitary sewer. It wouldn't be absolutely right for for me to make up eighteen thousand dollars in in revenue. I would have I would have to use an awful lot of water because mine on a, on an average year it's maybe five hundred dollars, and that's a long time for me to pay back the the infrastructure cost that the utility used and spent to put in the sewer and water. Just a comment. Hey, Mr. Donner, this looping this water through this area, it helped other subdivision. At the same time, it helped this subdivision also. If there is a problem in this subdivision in this water system, you can bring the water from tap a subdivision over here and serve them until the repair is done. Is that correct? Right, any looping or- That's the purpose mechanism. of the looping, to help the whole area together. It's not just that subdivision. Right. Okay. Um, Karen Walker, would you like to address? Again, uh, Sorry, but just to announce your name, uh, state your name and address for the record again, please. Uh, Karen Walker, 5201 Apache. Thank you. And again, at the 614 meeting, they talked about reducing the assessment, $17,424.59. And that would be 
that the village would be paying the sanitary main and the water mains. And then we would still pay the assessment, the sanitary lateral, the water lateral, and the driveway approach. But um, question two, as far as the COVID infrastructure money, I thought that was just now current, or is that something you have every year? No. But I didn't think so either. But I mean, that money, that was suggested too, to put that towards some of the cost. I mean, I still don't understand while these um, houses just on Apache uh, and a couple other on the other like uh, river, uh, I'm nervous now. No, that's right. But that's anyhow, right. Um, you're doing fine. why they have to just take the brunt when it, if you're going to, like Randy said, there is no room for future development on our Apache lane. And so this, the biggest, what they said and the meeting, and I've attended the meetings, all the meetings, and it was for future development for the area. But our area doesn't have future development unless you're talking miles away or something like that. And I don't see why we would have to pay for it if it benefits the village. Um, and my brother-in-law is a lawyer who lives in Illinois and that's what he told me. He's been in different cases like this and when it benefits the city or the village or the township, he said, then that's their responsibility. It's not your average taxpayer, the few. It's for the whole group of everyone. And correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, if, if you don't mind, but running that pipe through that street. So if a different street was picked, can you just put up the map, yep. please? So Apache is, uh, let me, are you crossing the water here? Yeah, so the water's right here. Okay. There's one house that goes to the left, too, on Tratzer. It's affected. They've got it only going, let's see, what would that be, west. So, but there is one house on the east that's yeah. also affected. So, so it jogs east, and then it goes down Apache. So that's the most sensible way to run this line, and not to go behind the homes on Apache, but to go down there so that it could serve both sides. <laughs> And then it continues up and then it continues up into the loop. Eventually, as systems fail out there, they're gonna all need this. And eventually it's gonna go down all the other roads. I thought North Apache in that subdivision, they have their own water system. They've already have water there. At a certain point- Yeah, was, up, up right. in here. And the, so the yellow line ends where the existing water and sewer comes down a state That's drive the and then right. that way on. North Apache. But, you know, looking at a failure, I think we, we checked with several different uh, plumbers, contractors, on how much it would cost to do a failure. And it's much more than what this would be to hook up to the system. And, and running that type by homes, we have to get that back. I mean, the, the village, the entire village has to get that money back. Uh, eventually, whether it be 10 years or tonight, if we vote to 20 years extension or deferment, you know, at, at some point, a portion of that has to be paid by the property owner that's getting the benefit, which which all the properties have had. Well, I thought that's why they said the lateral, we would pay for the sanitary lateral, the water lateral and the driveway yep. approach. It, Our house is 24,000 is what we're assessed for that. And that doesn't count what well, we're going to have to pay a plumber to hook us up to it. I hear that's another 15, 20,000. So what does that make our house work? Yeah. I, is that 15 months? No. I, I don't, I guess that's, it's case dependent as far as how close the hookup would need to be. You know, if people have patios, decks, anything like that, that maybe are in the way. So landscaping. landscaping. So, I mean, there, there is some restoration costs for, you know, connecting. Uh, and I guess just to maybe clarify the the proposal to remove the um, the main costs was I guess an ask of some of the residents during the the hearing process. Um, was that it, appeals? Was that it? Correct. Yes. Okay, I missed that one. Okay, I, I'm and I'm sorry, but I only was at the last one, so I missed the deal one. The yeah. also, that, if that was brought up, then that was under the discussion. It was the discussion. Okay, yeah, it, it was it was part of the discussion. Um, so. It was brought to then the Public Works Committee meeting this past or a week ago, um, talking about that as 
you know, that was a, an option to consider, um, I guess essentially based on the resident feedback, but um, that wasn't something that the Public Works Committee recommended moving forward with. Um, some of the other asks were um, changing the uh, requirements for connection, which right, you know, the initial um, recommendation followed our sewer ordinance, which was connection that would be required upon sale of property, um, system failure, or uh, 10 years. So uh, there was an ask to change that where it would just be system failure. Um, you know, again, the Public Works Committee still stuck with the original, uh, but the one amendment they did make was for the reduction in the engineering costs or elimination of the engineering costs. But it is not on tonight uh, talk on extension of the deferment? That would be part of this. Item. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I guess I'm just bringing those up because those were options all discussed. So right. Right now it's um, failure, uh, sale, and defer. And up to ten. At ten years. Okay. So if we pulled the condition of sale off, that would then follow the sale, because we'd have to recoup, and and it would have to follow the sale of the home to the next owner. Correct. Right? It would stay on the property. So that would have to be disclosed when you sell that home or that property. Okay. So that that's an option. All right. So failure, uh, sale or not sale, but follow the property, and then uh, a ten-year or twenty-year deferment. Right. Okay. Correct. Yes, and I, and I have a question too. In the minutes of the meeting, it said the residents recognized a need for the project. I was at that six-nine meeting, and I did not hear that from the people. It was all there were even people who were not on the street that were opposed to it for various reasons. And I have, I need to read my notes is one thing, but it's just, um, I didn't understand why that was in the minutes because of the fact that that was not said, you know. And Did we get some uh, notification by a few people or was it said to anybody that attended that meeting? There, uh, there were, if memory serves me right, a couple emails that said under, uh, understanding the need for this, but can you, reduce some of the water and sewer hookup fees in order to be more accommodating to the taxpayers given the costs of the project okay. and the cost of the assessment. Did I miss that at the meeting? I didn't know the email said that, you know, as far as whatever. Well, it's it's some of the documentation. I mean, right now we're we're publicly talking about these public comments, but mm -hmm. but I I'll, I get stuff and clerk gets stuff constantly on issues that, of we, course. that we'll read in. And that's probably why it wasn't in there or said that night. Okay. So, okay. Um, so, Karen, anything else? No, it's just a cost. Okay. When they, you know, at the meeting 614, when they said they were talking about, or I shouldn't say you, the, the committee said they were talking about reducing the assessment by $17,424.59. My heart fluttered because I thought that would definitely help because the debt could be put <coughs> towards hooking up to your house. To your system right you know the main system and i thought well they would help you know i mean you pay taxes and everything what are you paying for and i still don't understand why apache lane has to pay for the benefit of the village because there are no more homes that will be on apache lane thank you thank you karen um so up in front of us right now we have three options to this <coughs> resolution on that we could, you're saying potentially we could change in this vote? Oh, is there somebody, uh, somebody else that wanted to talk? Uh, I, I, I have Karen and Randy. Is there somebody else? I, I don't have no, nothing else. Thank you. Um, okay, okay. There was no. Um, we have, um, for um, the donation, is gonna come up and then Mitch is gonna talk about Nick. Okay. Okay. Yep. There's a lady on my choice. Who's that? Oh, that was uh, for the donation. Um, yeah, the, yeah, donation. donation. That'll be under uh, 68 uh, 2. Okay, so. So, with respect to this item. Yep. Um, this special assessment process that Village has adopted involves what we call the authorizing resolution, which um, the board adopts um, to allow the project to begin and says that we're accept you're accepting the engineer's report as amended. Now, there's further amendments that you request to the engineer's report. I guess that that would be part of your motion. So right now you're considering what has been recommended by Public Works um, and the amendments made 
to the report consistent with that recommendation. Because if you want further amendments, you would need to add those to any motion you might make. So a further amendment would be such that the 10 year deferment could go to 20. Mm -hmm. And um, I think failure is agreed upon that at failure, it's connection, because it's actually cheaper than a, a, the other way. And then the other one would be sale of property. Normally it's put on, on the sale, it has to be paid. This would be during the sale, it would have to follow the sale to the new owner and still be owed. That's an option, correct? It'd be a lien on the property. A lien on the property, right? And it would end up being a negotiated item between the seller and the buyer. And the buyer, okay. I think that complicates it. Uh, it does complicate it. Yes, it does. It does. Mr. Maloney. Yep. That 20 years, I think it was discussed at the public hearing. And the way it was explained was you have 10 years to connect. Mm -hmm. Then at the end of the 10 years, then you connect. That's the time you start paying. Then mm -hmm. only you can wait to pay another 10 years. That gives you that 20 years. Correct? Yes. Under the way we haven't currently stated yet, there would be, we would be allowing a 10 year repayment period at so, year 10 as well. So you yeah. go all the way to 10 years and then connect yep. and then start the process of the next 10 years to pay. Right. Okay, so you finish at the end of 20 years. Right. Okay. If you if you wait if you did not connect until year ten. Okay. So we also tried we also put in the, the capital cost reduction of the sewer um you know maximum of twenty five percent in first year and then that would ramp down over time to the year ten where it would be no reduction in that capital cost. Okay. So so there would be a reduction on year one and then it would be for it. it'd be a slight scale. Right. Uh, Derek Rudolski, uh, as a percentage, how or what percentage is the village paying of this project <laughs> and what percentage are That's the good question. property owners paying? That's a good question. The entire project. I believe it ends up being about 70-30, uh, maybe even 75-25. Um, uh, so 25 by the, effect, by the benefited residents. Correct. You know. And 75 by the rest of the community. Yeah, so the total assessed cost is, you know, $448,000 for a round number. And total estimated cost is, you know, $1.75 million. So, yeah, I mean, that ends up being about 25.6%. So it's about 25% uh, residents on Apache, 75% the rest of the village and utility customers. Okay. That's not the whole project, right? That doesn't include the lift station? No, the lift station's separate. So I guess it, if we, when we get that lift station in there, Does that'd be another. include the pipe under the river too? That includes the pipe under the river. That's, so that's where a lot of, you know, if you look at the water improvements, you know, it's 461,000. You know, the, the part of that being assessed is 165. So that's where that difference comes in is between the oversizing and the part of the project that um, is going from Ryan Street across the river to the end of Trotzer. None of that is being assessed, none of that linear footage. Uh, I do, or when we, uh, when we discussed it at Public Works, um, I, I know an engineer, but I asked the rest of the committee for their thoughts on mitigating the water and sewer um, assessments. And it was universal uh, in its rejection. Um, past practice spoke strongly against it. Um, looking, uh, looking forward, uh, individuals or neighborhoods would uh, want to use it as precedent um, and that's why, um, but recognizing that the property owners are in, um, are in for a large assessment, that was sort of the motivating factor in waiving the engineering fees mm -hmm. from their assessment. Um, Trustee Zagami, did, did I miss any, anything from that conversation? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, what's your pleasure? Um,
I'll, I'll move to approve resolution 2021-017, authorizing staff to move forward with the Apache Lane utility looping project. Motion by White. Um, just clarify, so um, there's a couple options. There's the original, there's the one with the amendment that takes out the- I'm open problems. to a, f a friendly suggestion for the uh, motion. Uh, amendment one would include waiving the engineering costs. Um, I think that would, uh, I think that um, given the size of the, uh, given the size of the project and the assessment, um, that would certainly be welcome. Uh, if you take that as a friendly amendment. I will. Are there any other friendly amendments? I would also um, like the 20 year deferment, if you're willing to accept that as a friendly amendment. I will also accept that. Okay. So that's your motion. With those two suggested okay. things to my original. So we would need a, a second to, to go on discussion. I'll second that. So we have a motion by White, a second by Feeney. Who's, who's gonna start on discussion? You? I just questioned, can we actually go to 20 years on a deferment? that is technically and legally acceptable. I don't think we've done that on any of the other projects. No, and this will set a precedent too. Oh, that's what I'm saying. I think yeah. there was some, I thought there was a legal challenge to that, but I, I, I if you heard that I did not. No, I'm just saying, I, I just know that when we, we've had other neighborhoods that it went in, it was always 10 years and I could, I think it'd be levy and assessment and it's on the books as a lien the option to defer it. I think it's where we have like a developer contribution mm -hmm. or we don't or we don't assess up front for a project for a water project anyway. Um, the Public Service Commission would not allow us to have a capital recovery on anything in yeah. 10 years. Right. Mm -hmm. So we would so right now we would book this as a as a contributed asset in both storm and water and you know we could collect the revenue on it whenever the connection's made in the mm -hmm. future. Now, I, if you're talking about the deferment of the 20 years, maybe you know, one suggestion we thought would be reasonable is that if somebody wants to defer beyond 10, that we should put in a requirement to have a system confirm that it is still functioning properly. Um, we talked with our attorney about that. He thought that would be a reasonable request on our end at year at year 10 10 year yes. increments and then and then the five and if they want to do it five years later then the same thing so we could have at, at our cost do it at our cost mm -hmm. or require at their cost i guess the option would okay. be ours. Then another point of clarification is if we defer to 20 years 20 years is the point of payment then you'd have 10 years to pay correct well Yes, it would be 10 years after hookup and we would not require hookup until the 10th year, correct? No, no, 20th. If we're gonna to defer to 20, right? But am I not understanding this? Yeah, so I mean, if somebody waited, so what are we, we're in 2021? We're gonna defer to 20, yep. and you wait to 20 to hook up, yep. then you have an additional 10 years to make pay, those payments, to make those okay. 10 year installments. Right. I just wanna make sure we're all clear on what we're voting yep. for. <clears throat> and uh, a 10 year uh, uh, health ch or checkup on the system paid by the village. It would probably work better if there were, if someone would offer an amendment to the motion, since we already had a motion in a second, so if someone wants to. Okay. I'll offer that, but before I do that, are these all according to our ordinance and also meet the WPS decorum? We would need to make some amendments to our ordinance as recommended by our attorney. Um, if we're going to be making this kind of a radical change on what we're recommending mm -hmm. for the meeting, radical. we may want to read here yes. mm -hmm. to, to explain that to the residents. And a sale still holds. So at a sale, that mm -hmm. would have to be collected. We're not going to follow a property through a new order. I think that'd get pretty messy. So we would still require the repayment at the time of sale, you're saying? Mm -hmm. What you and that's, and that's uh, as it's worded and in the that's the motion and that's the second report right now. Mm -hmm. in, in order to make any further changes, we would need a motion to amend. And, okay. So right now it's the 
20 year deferment. Mm -hmm. It's the amendment one, which reduces the, or which waives the engineering costs. And then, yeah, those were the two friendly amendments. Mm -hmm. Is it all clear? So you're saying that, okay, okay, so they don't have to hook up for 20 years. And then it's 10 years once, once they do hook up. And we're able to monitor that. Well, we can, we can monitor 10 and 10. We certainly yeah. monitor 20 and 10, I would think. I mean, we still have the um, reserve capacity assessment on the books for properties all over the village. And that was in, what, 1996 when that was first adopted? So I mean, we still collect that on properties as people connect. So yeah, I think we'd be able to keep okay. track of this. Some of it disappeared, I think, when the Rothschild stuff happened. I, I know there was some confusion back then. I'm just... yeah. Right. Well, we're we're a village now, so you're right. When we were a township, we we lost some ground there because we lost real estate and utilities and everything else. And then there's a little bartering going back and forth. But as a village status, we're more protected, like a city too. I have one more question. Yes. I still don't know how we're going to finance this and how we're going to pay that, and who's going to cover the interest? As we proposed it, the village is covering the interest. And village paying all this until the resident will start paying back without the interest. The village or the utility? Utility. 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 Utility paying now, but eventually they get back from the residents when they sell or when they connect. Or failure. Or, or failure. failure. The utility start getting paid. Right. Without the interest. Right. Yes. As it's currently awarded, yes. Trustee White, are you satisfied? I, if someone has made a motion to amend my motion, I, I, think I haven't heard who's, who made the motion. I, I didn't hear. I'm sorry. I didn't hear much. You, you did not amend. No. Right now, we're sitting on a, a first and a second. Correct. And we'll need that amendment to amend. No, someone would have to make the amendment. I, I they would need to move to amend, amend the, motion. the motion, right? Okay. I'll move to amend the motion. Okay. And what is your amendment? Give us your, the your amendment is that three things we talked about: the twenty years payment, uh, the ten, the ten year pay, yeah, yep. failure of the system, or sale of the property. That's your amendment to the motion. Okay. 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 Uh, well, you would have to, someone would have to second his amendment. I'll second that mo I'll second, second the motion. Second by Zong. We're on good ground. Right. And there would be the vote on the, amend the amendment. So um, hearing it, no more discussion. Um, all those in favor on the amendment, say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried on the original um, motion, motion as amended. As amended. Um, hearing no more discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> so carried. There you go. 52. Sherry, you have that all recorded? Thank you. So for those in the audience who want to clarify, what? please. Okay. Go ahead. So, so with the resolution that the board adopted, uh, for those of you on Apache Lane, it was to go with the uh, amendment which reduced the cost by the 3,000, um, 3,385.92 per lot. And then um, the connection requirements would be at failure of system, sale of property, or um, at year 20. So it moved that from year 10 out to year 20. And then at year 20, you'd still have um, 10 annual payments made. So. If, 2021, you'd be able to wait until 2041 to connect to the system. So your assessment won't be due until, say, 2042, if I did that math right. And then in nine equals. And then in, and then in 10 equal payments. So your last payment would be in 2052, essentially. So you don't pay until you connect? You don't pay until you connect. And you can, you can defer for 20 years. 
unless you sell it. Unless you sell it, you sell it, or if your system fails. Yep. If your system fails. Your system fails. And at year ten, uh, we're going to come in. I, I, not me. Not, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know that at all. But at, at year ten, I, I think it's uh, uh, prudent to test the systems to make sure that they're functioning correctly. And if they're functioning correctly, you can go another ten years. Randy. I know that. Uh, of course, with the DNR regulations, we do have to pump every three years anyway, so they yep. are inspected. Yep. Okay. So I mean, the DNR actually has control over a lot of the inspection that would take place. <coughs> you have drain fields and tanks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Mine happens to be a standard conventional system, but I don't know if there's really been a lot of failures in our area. <laughs> I've only lived there three years, so. <coughs> My question would be, though, on the finance part of it, what would say you wanted to pay before you ever hooked up? Like, add X amount of dollars on your taxes when you pay your taxes. Would they subtract it off from there? Or do you have to wait till you get hooked up? Well, we're, we're offering a 25% reduction if you start paying on year, year one. If you made payments, though, I mean, not pay the lump sum. Correct. Correct. Yeah. If you connect and start paying, correct. But you would have to connect. I'm saying if yep. you could make payments on it before you connect it. Well, I mean, technically, you could put that money in a different savings account. Right, you and, could. And have more control on that money instead of paying the village and then having no control on that money if you had an emergency. So you could certainly start another account and start paying. And then when it's due or when you want to hook up, it's all there for you. And then you'd be earning some interest, not much. But some. I was going to say. This. Yeah, I, 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 I had to clarify that really quick. Uh, Karen? Uh, the 25% too is not on your whole bill. No. It's on, on one thing. It's on the sewer portion. Sewer, sewer yeah. portion. Sewer portion. Sewer portion, yes. correct. Yep, good point. PSC won't let us write on water yeah. options. So, uh, okay. Right, you got 20 years to hook up, and then your payments would start once you're hooked up. In the 20 10 years. years. Yep. Correct. And then nine more. Okay. And hopefully we're all around in the next 30 years. I, was just <laughs> <laughs> I well, don't I think I will be. I do that right now. <laughs> all right. All right. Think, we're going to. The sale also, I think I explained it that, that night at the hearing. When you sell your property, your price of property is separate at the assessment. It's not together. Right. Whatever they price your property, let's say, I'm going to pick up a number, $20,000. You get that $20,000, the buyer has to pay to the village the cost of the sewer and water. So it doesn't affect the price of the property. Just okay. How would it not affect the price of the property? Because your property going to be priced as it is, and that assessment sitting in there separate <clears throat> is not part of your property yet. You, you may have some negotiation yeah. there, mm -hmm. but you know, I. I mean, not, not to elongate this meaning, but uh, I, I'm right on the edge of, of water. <coughs> so there's a property right next door to me that just sold. And uh, it, it went very well. But a lot of the people that looked at it did not want to buy it because it was not on sewer and water and for the price they were going to pay. Because they eventually felt that they were going to be having to hook up or replace something. They just blame it on the sewer and water. Yeah. They did. You're next door. And, and, and also the neighbor. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, it was, maybe it was me yeah. that they didn't yeah. want to live yeah. next to. But uh, anyway. You know, just, Mark, just it's a point. good reason we love uh, listening yeah. to you talk for five yeah. hours. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. With, with nothing else, let's let's move on to the second resolution here. Uh, resolution uh, 52, resolution number. Thank you for your participation, Randy and Karen. Uh, number 52, resolution number 2021-018, approving the preliminary plat of Inner Spring subdivision. Uh, Move to approve resolution 2021-018, approving preliminary plat of the Inner Spring subdivision. Moved by Feeney. <coughs> second. Second by Manel. On the question, on the question, we had a gentleman here talking at public comment, um, but we satisfied his comment on, on the... Uh, he was concerned about uh, access. Right way, yep. right so I just, I just want to make that point. So, um, okay, hearing no more discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Unfinished business, number 53, update on American Rescue Plan ARPA funds. 
I, I, just, I'm gonna every every time I get that stuff, I'm gonna keep sending it to you, just so you can. I don't know if it's real or not, so okay. Most of it is it's from the treasury. So, okay. Uh, this was a request from the last meeting to be brought back up. Um, I provided a little bit more updated information. Um, I'm not sure. I don't know if we're ready to really make suggestions of what we want to use to it, but I guess this is a point for him to discuss it. And this is. Will this be paid over how many years? Or in so we got half. We I got saw, I saw the half. Million June first. Okay. Um, okay. I think I should mention it. We talked about it for the patch. Mm -hmm. One of the situations, it'd be a little bit funny. It we can't use it for borrowing. If we borrow over stuff already, it's really not intended for that purpose. So it should be a project that we're not borrowing. Have not borrowed for, or have not borrowed a full amount for that we can um, add it to. I, I think my only opinion on how this would be spent would be that it would benefit the entire village, you know, or equally among all the departments to benefit all the village again. You know, not a project, not a subdivision, but if it if it takes the burden off of the entire village, the entire community. And I would, I would be for that. And if it's in line with how how they let us spend it, yeah. So, and uh, so there is restrictions. Is there any uh, a, a deadline that we have to spend this money? Twenty twenty four. Okay, on it both halves. Obligated. Okay, so twenty twenty four on this first half, and then twenty twenty five on the full month. So once we get the second half, which would be next year, or. Okay. I, I just want to clarify, um, Jess, you said obligated, not necessarily spent. Exactly. You got to spend it by 2026, but it's got to be obligated by the end of 2024. Okay. Good point. Okay. So no action has to be taken, just a little bit more info, a little something more to chew on. Yes. I guess I, just to, so everybody, so the board understands, I know that Marathon County is kind of promoting having some kind of uh, contributions and, and working on this idea of um, rural broadband access. I know we have a few areas in the village that are not served, but those that are more select areas, and I don't know that that's the philosophy based on your comments, uh, Trustee Maloney, or President Maloney, about the, uh, the, the you know, trying to benefit the most uh, most people in the village as possible. Um, we thought that maybe you mentioned at the special assessment hearing for Patsy Lane that perhaps one of our projects in the capital plan for the water sewer system might be a good candidate, like our iron manganese treatment at well, well one and five or three. Or, sorry, or three or three. So, I mean, yeah, there's. There's different options. But, but, anyway. but spending that money there would be benefiting the entire community. I, I know it's I know it's a water system in a certain area, but it would be paid by the entire community. That That's kind of my point, that it, it, it's just not a certain section. Right. Trustee White? Oh, oh, having been on the fire department for a long time, we always used to hear, well, I, I don't need that. I don't have it. Well, you know, if it's wintertime and we can't get that water, we have to go to a hybrid. We, we tap into the villages water system to fight fires it's not fun it's not very efficient but it is a water supply so that's it's some people might think of it as a stretch but it does benefit the entire right right including people that are far far away from the nearest hydrant i think um okay. i i concur with uh it should be spent on uh village-wide benefit um I also uh, see that um, that there is a premium pay option for essential workers, and given that um, the firefighters, police officers, and EMTs never had a day off during COVID and uh, and often faced the highest risk, I, uh, I don't think that some small bounty or one-time bonus uh, would be entirely out of line. Okay. 
Um, a question for uh, Administrator Donner. Um, I couldn't recall, but I know that I know you mentioned that the county is trying to put together kind of a um, cooperation or collaboration of multiple municipalities here to, to help address the broadband issue. Did they express how much um, you know they're um, either recommending each municipality to help contribute towards it, or are they kind of just leave it open ended? I'm sure they're probably just doing that open ended, knowing that we all have access to these funds. I think Sean probably said in the last one when this was discussed. Yeah, um, and and they're they're kind of focusing on some of the towns more, just because some of the towns um, amount that they're getting is not realistic for them to spend on this type of project or infrastructure. Um, so. I mean, they know that there's some funds available from these townships that where the benefit will actually take, take place if they're working on the rural brand. But they're they're also open to obviously other suggestions of projects that could be used countywide also. But they're still still pretty broad on the discussion right now on their um, on the Wednesday municipalities meeting, which is now just once a month. So because I, I just going back to my comment from the last uh, a village board meeting, I think maybe we should also try to get some input from the community. Just my thought. <coughs> hold a uh, hold another public hearing. Well, there are some a little questionnaire or something, but yeah. Yeah, the, the county is planning on doing some public outreach also, um, but they plan on putting together a list of potential projects, not where people are just coming in and giving you a wish list and they don't even fit in the guidelines. Right. So, and WASA did theirs already. I, I would assume that I, if we do do some sort of a public, uh, you know, some sort of a public feedback or outreach, I would assume that we should do, uh, I, I would want us to do the same thing as well, not just give an open ended question, or rather it's a list of things. That Put points in there that say you can't be used, you can't be used for this, can't be used for that. Correct. You know, because okay. otherwise we're going to have a whole bunch of suggestions, that, and then they're going to be frustrated because of the suggestions were taken. Not because we not done. don't think they're valid, it's just because they don't qualify. Okay, enough of 53. Mm -hmm. Can we, uh, we oh, just one last yeah. question? Can we just kind of put a kind of like a standing item on sure. so that we can continue discussions on this? Yeah, thank you. Number 54, no mole may in the village of Weston. Uh, it's not May anymore, uh, but uh, during uh, uh, at the last uh, board meeting, uh, it was discussed and um, essentially this would be a one month moratorium on uh, on having individuals being fined for unruly uh, unruly lawns that exceed our um, that exceed the um, ordinance um, and going going forward. Uh, in May, uh, it would be normal May uh, in perpetuity. And that'll be addressed next April or when? Uh, so, uh, I, uh, because it's no longer timely, mm -hmm. I'm fine if we would, if we want to skip this until next April or May. Um, I would suggest even earlier than that because I have a feeling it would take, you know, as we say, the the wheels of justice grind fine but slow. So April is kind of short. I mean, just speaking for myself, I'm fine if we want to skip this one. Okay. So can we go? I guess just a question here: is there is it possible if we could I, I don't even know, but I mean, is it possible to send it to a committee for um, for them to kind of discuss it a little bit more details? Um, it, it, does, it doesn't matter to me. But just uh, to it me. was it was discussed at Public Works. Yeah. Be clear. I, I think we actually declared that it couldn't grow in a month to the standard of a citation, so it it wouldn't actually have to be. But maybe a social media you could push it to uh, protect the bees. Symbolism does matter. Mm -hmm. There you go. Oh, should table, table, have to get some yeah. more epi pens for some of the people oh, that are having problems yeah. with these things, but other than that, a few deaths will be okay. And drill works just as good. 
Yeah. For us people that are looking to. Yes. Can you vote this on the next January? Yes. Tabled. So, but we need a motion to table it out. Um, yes. Out. Okay. Not table, uh, defer or postpone. Right. Table would mean we take it off and vote it again at the same meeting. So defer. So defer. Yeah. For postpone. Is it in a motion to defer, or, or can we just defer? Um, in order to be kosher, uh, I think that we do need to uh, to formally move that it be deferred until uh, until January. next January. January is twenty twenty. So a motion, a motion to defer would be in order. Yes, it would. Move to defer until next January. Uh, by Hussein Zagami. Second. By Nate Feeney. Uh, without no further discussion, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried 55, well number seven and number eight, Pump House Final Design and Bidding Contract Amendment. Michael? Well, yes, I guess the main question still up for uh, discussion was whether or not uh, the Pump House and well seven area on the south side of uh, the river there at the disc golf course should should it contain a, a public restroom and or if a uh, park shelter should be included. Um, uh, public Works and uh, Parks Committees did have a joint meeting on the 14th in which uh, they both recommended including uh, public restrooms and a park shelter. But, uh, let's just bring it back for either concurrence or any changes. Um, the one uh, ask was that it, I guess to clarify, this would just be in the design uh, and talking with the um, AECOM, who is our design engineer on this project, they can bid it so that the bathrooms would be a, a separate bid item and the shelter would be a separate bid item. So this would just be for the design and that way when uh, we get through the bids, we'd have a hard number to then make that final decision of whether we build or not build um, based on that cost from we would build but we would not add or add correct yeah we build the wells and the pump house and then we would have an, which is going to happen which is going to happen and then we would have a number for if we wanted to add restrooms on or not and then we'd have a number so would the restrooms be added on for public use and and uh, 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 public workers or just public workers or just private uh, if, if we put them on there it'd probably just be for public use um, you know an exterior entrance you know, if it's deemed that we don't want them, need them, we'd probably just take them out. Multi-sex? Correct, yeah, just two, probably, um, you know, single user. Family restroom. Yeah. So not, the, not the whole family is supposed to be in there. So I'll make a motion to uh, recommend, uh, to, I move to recommend the site design to include public restrooms at the pump, at the pump house and to have a park shelter included with well seven. Am I reading the right one? Yes. yes Correct. I'll second. We have a motion by Zong and a second by Zagami. Any more on the discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Uh, new business, 56, intergovernmental agreement with the village of Rothschild for preliminary reconstruction design of Weston Avenue from Alderson Street to Bird Street. Move to approve. Move to approve by Zagami. Second. Second by Feeney. On the discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. 57, preliminary design engineering contract for Weston Avenue from Alderson Street, Alderson Street to Bird Street. Move to approve. Move to approve by Zagami. Second by Manel. Question. Question. Uh, we're going to, uh, I ask, our administrator, Mr. Donner, for one of this meeting, bring back a resolution to add to our ordinance. Any professional company wants to work in the village, they have to call the water certificate. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Yep. And it's going to come up probably now. And the way to start was this contract by uh, Midstate, and they change the wording in their contract, plus they submit their certificate to Michael. Mm -hmm. Is that correct, Michael? Yeah, so in their contract, you know, they've got this 
the general clause for insurance. Um, and then if the owner requires <clears throat> anything above or beyond what they have as their standard coverage, you know, we would <clears throat> geez, uh, be required to uh, add to that. I did receive, I asked for their certificate of insurance um, and it, you know, they got a $2 million per occurrence. occurrence so uh, it, it, it exceeds anything we've required anybody else to have, so. I think that's important. Think, that's good. I think Mr. Trustee Zagami's comment also was to include us as an additional insured. Mm -hmm. The best thing yep. should be in there as an additional, uh, additional insured. Yeah, so we're listed on their certificate of insurance. Oh, okay, we are. Okay. Yep. And, and it's, it's and filed and, and filed once, and then it's it's in place. Correct. Correct. It does not have to be submitted every time. And then what annually? Yeah, annually submissions. Okay. All right. Actually, when we do that, all the company they work or they want to work for the village, they send their certificate mm -hmm. to the clerk and they can file. Okay. All right. So we have a motion and a second. Is there any more in the discussion? Uh, Sherry, you have that motion? Okay. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. 58. Tanya Trisha, lift station construction contract. Move to award the Tanya Trisha lift station construction contract with Pepper Companies Incorporated in the amount of 412500 for public works and utility committee recommendation. Motion, motion by White, second by Zagami. Any more on the discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. 59, contract amendment number two with Clark Deets for construction services for the Ryan Street slash Apache Lane utility looping project. Is this the contract to talk about it, Michael? Because of the cost of it? This is an amendment to the right. contract. Yes, number two. It was supposed to write the <coughs> contract. No, that was the AECOM one. Okay. And they, they did write a separate one. That was for the well design. All right. Okay. Move to approve. Move to approve by Zagami. Second. Second by Pini. On the question. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Number 60, change order number one for the Crestwood Acres Reconstruction Project. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have an ethical conflict on this and will excuse myself for the duration of debate and vote. Don't go too far. I don't think this will take too long. Go what? I just told him don't go too far. I don't think this will take too long. All right. Uh, change order number one for Crestwood Acres Construction Project. What's your pleasure? It was approved by the public board. Yep. Mm -hmm. I move to approve this. Move to approve by Zagami. Second. Second by White. On the discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Mr. Feeney, come on back in. I think you were listening. <laughs> I can okay. listen. Okay. Um, just saying. <laughs> I think you were listening. All right. 61. Uh, Barbican Avenue Repaving and Concrete Repair Project. What's your pleasure? I move to award the construction contract to American Asphalt for the Barbican Avenue Repaving and Concrete Repair Project at their bid price of $850,507. And 74 cents. Motion by White. <clears throat> Do I have a second? I'll second. That. Second by Manel. On the discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So oh, carried. 62. Erica, are you still hanging in with us? Yes, I am. Uh, thank you very much. I tried to move it along, but they wouldn't let me. You you are uh, perfectly fine. Okay, all right. So I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, it's not true. We all did the same. So I'm just teaching. <laughs> all right. Under 62. So would you like to speak first? Sure. So I guess um, I'll just kind of reiterate some of the stuff that was in the letter. Um, so my name is Erica. I am the current um, board president and the founder for Gigi's Playhouse in um, Weston. Um, yes, we're called Wasso, Wisconsin, but we're actually located in Weston. 
Um, so we are part of a bigger network of playhouses. Um, we're relatively new. We opened in December. Um, we are a nonprofit. So um, one thing that makes us very, very unique as a nonprofit is we are locally 100% volunteer run. Um, so that's designed that way to be able to keep programming that we offer um, to individuals with Down syndrome and related disabilities and their families free. Um, we held an event on June 5th, not knowing at all what to expect with this event. Um, we had never done a 5K before and ultimately exceeded all expectations. Um, we had people actually come to Weston. It was located, um, the event was at the YMCA. Um, we had people come out of state to actually attend this event and stay for the weekend um, with their families. Um, and ultimately, um, as a nonprofit, we, we just wanted to be able to ask um, if we were able to um, potentially get the application um, and the police, uh, because we, we did need police presence um, to block uh, two intersections of the 5K um, to ensure people's safety uh, during the event, to be able to cover. So ultimately my, my request is to be able to um, have those costs covered, um, being that we are a nonprofit. Um, and I guess I just would also encourage anyone who's hearing me right now, um, to come and visit us. We are very proud of our space um, and what we're able to do for the community. Um, so we're, we're, we love showing it off. Okay, so a few questions. Yep. Um, first and foremost, I do wanna let, uh, uh, let Erica know that I am not a, uh, I'm not opposing the, uh, I, I'm a big fan of the Gigi's Place Playhouse here, but I do have some uh, technical questions here. The $70 or the $380 that we're requesting for, um, because EMPD is kind of, is a joint um, or a department or uh, between uh, between the Weston, Schofield and Town of Weston, is that $280 or $140 or um, $280, is that solely just the Village of Weston's expenses or is it, or is that, uh, is that the total amount? Um, I'm just kind of curious about that. Oh, I think the chief will yeah. answer that. So, is this is this a full community wide three communities or specifically Western? No, we are a joint venture, so right. we don't split anything right. in our budget. That's what I thought. If I could just make a couple comments. First, Erica, I understand it was very successful, and I um, thank you for your efforts towards Down syndrome. So, my comments don't re reflect specifically to this event, but just so the board understands that EMPD does not have the staff that can guarantee any of these events for safe crossings. Uh, it requires overtime for each of these events in order to assure that those officers are specifically assigned to that event and not pulled from the event for an emergency in the middle, which could have, you know, obviously horrible consequences. Um, currently I am running over in my overtime budget. Mm -hmm. so it's not like we're flush with funds. Um, there are a lot of events each year. We are adding events every year and um, it gets to be tough to even fill them with overtime because we are filling shifts with overtime. And then lastly, I wanted to just say that each event is important to each event organizer. And I've had these discussions with many event organizers over the past several years. And it's very important to the attendees as well. And it has been my position as a police chief that I do not want to pick and choose on which events we are going to waive fees for. So it is my recommendation that we keep the fees in our and the way it's been been done in the past. I, I would agree with the chief that uh, that structure has to be consistent. Um, along with, I believe this board has to be consistent and to to say yay or nay to any group. Uh, in the past, we done some events and then we are now currently steering away from saying yes or no uh, to uh, donations. I mean, I, I don't believe we're in the position to donate uh, public money. Um, if, if anything, this should go to tourism. If they can actually establish uh, hotel rooms and different oh, things. Exactly, because and, and, and her talk, she talks yep. about people were yep. staying overnight. And, 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 and if that happened, that's fantastic. And, and if we can substantiate some hotel rooms to this event, that'd be fantastic. 
But otherwise, Erica, um, I, in my opinion, uh, the one one of seven on this board, uh, my opinion is that it, that this money should go. We should go after. You should go after some private, uh, you know, for profit businesses. Um, but I, I just don't believe that uh, the municipality is in a, in a in a spot to be able to do this. If, if we did this, then how would we say yes or no to anybody else coming? And and these are great great events. And uh, you know I, I applaud you on, on all of this, but I it's just I don't I personally don't think it belongs at this level here. So is, is yeah. tourism able to handle? The um, tourism can handle. Well, the tourism yeah. committee just recommended everything go to the CBB. So, right. Oh, yeah. Unless we want to it can go through the CBB. It can go through tourism. But I believe in our role as a municipality governing taxes that I would vote no on everyone. It sounds cold, it sounds hard, but I just don't believe it's our place. I, I believe a private business, uh, any any retailer, which I used to be in, I mean, I, I've got 10 a week on uh, donations. And uh, that's just how it did. Uh, well, Lauren? Mr. President, I think your comment about this property belongs with the Convention and Visitors Bureau. Right. Because that's what those funds are for, right. particularly when they bring in people, right. overnight stays, hotel, hotel restaurants. And I, I think it's uh, it's not very much, but I, I think they, if they no. didn't, no. I think- Erica, they, Erica, there's a 8% charge on all the hotel rooms in all the communities in the surrounding area, You know, of, of course, including Weston. And you, you are not behind or you are not at a disadvantage that you could request this uh, from the CBB um, or our tourism committee. And uh, I, I believe going to the CBB and, and, and I believe we're right in the middle of, you know, signing some contracts or some agreements. So um, if we- Has she approached, did she yeah. approach? I, I don't know if she even knew. Erica, did you approach anybody else? You didn't direct her. No, no, we, no. We, were, we were told to approach you. Okay, so, so um, can, I, can I ask who told you to approach us? Um, that was something that, um, as we were working with the permit for the hundred dollars that was brought up, um, to apply so, for it to be covered. So, so basically because the bill was incurred from the, the EMPD or the fee to hold the event, you're just basically asking for it back. So I, I understand the thought process there. Uh, but they'd be like any other fee structure, any other chargeable event, um, you know, to, to be able to ask for it back. So it, it's going to be have to be covered by a private business or I, I believe you'll be very successful through the CBB. So uh, also uh, Green Heck is very charitable in the area. Um, <coughs> they they fund many, uh, many things to send. It's, it's worth a it's worth a call um, in the just over two years that I've been here um, we've probably had about a dozen uh, requests for grants come forward and we've uh, rejected all of them for the same reason unfortunately we just don't have the financial room to do so and we're also picking uh, different organizations, which opens us up to, or could open us up to some, um, some awkward questions. Um, so that's, you're, you're not alone. And this is a very worthy cause. I visited you during your, uh, opening weekend and was just blown away. And I'm very glad that you've had success. Um, Okay, do we, do we have to take formal action on this? Um, to deny? Okay. Uh, Erica, just um, uh, one more question for myself. Uh, are you reachable at 715-370-6652? Correct. Okay. Um, I, I believe um, this board is gonna deny this request uh, right after I'm done speaking. Uh, but I will be contacting you tomorrow. As will I. Okay. Well, you want to pay for it? <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I, I can't I chip just, in. I mean, if you want to pay for it, you call her first. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. So, you're right, you're then, Mr. Moneybags. You, you definitely. You're Mr. Uh, Moneybags. I, I will help you recover these funds, okay? Um, Mark, uh, the uh, um, obviously many people know I chair the Mawaso Festival, too. I'll go 50-50 with you, if you uh, if, or well, if you're interested in that as well. Yeah. Okay. Then I'll just have a small miscellaneous donation. <laughs> They'll probably pick up a pizza. Yes. So, okay. <laughs> Erica, so Erica, just I, I just wanted to kind of let you know here before you hear this next vote, okay? But she should make. I mean, we should yes, make sure that she's. Yep. That she's. I, I am going to stands that the money. There's money available yep. for yes. doing this yep. kind of stuff through er, there. Erica, so. when I when we have a, a discussion tomorrow, I will, um, I will help you with um, future uh, projects. Okay. Does she know what? Sounds CBB? good. Yeah, CBB by the way is. Um, Central Visitors Bureau. It's our um, the Wasas. It's our convention. It's our convention bureau, and you know we raise the the taxes are eight percent uh, uh, room tax fees at all the hotels. It goes into this big pot, and um, what you're doing, you can be requesting money for that. So we'll chat about that tomorrow. Okay. Future events also. Yep. Right. And future. All right. All right. Um, the pleasure of the board. I'll make a motion to deny the request. Uh, motion to deny it by Zong. Second. Uh, second by Feeney. Anything more on the discussion? Uh, hearing none, all those in favor are aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Erica, uh, my name is Mark Maloney, okay? Okay, thank you. Right. Thank you. All right, uh, moving on to, help me somebody, help me. All right, safer, safer agreement. agreement. Amendments to safer charter agreement. Lauren? So as I've reported in the past, the State Board of Directors has been reviewing the charter for a second amendment and it has come down to the document that is presented this evening. There is a clean copy that says draft in there. Well, that's it. Incorporating all the changes. There's also a red line copy in there as far as the Minister Donner advised me that that's in there also. There is the Appendix A, which details that asset, uh, assets at the beginning. And there's also uh, under B, B2 is the signed copy of the lease between Safer and the Village of Weston. Even though it doesn't have a date on the first page, it does have a signed document. Uh, I talked to Administrator Donner today and asked him about, it talks about exhibits, exhibit one in here, <clears throat> the, like the footprint of the parts of the building, our building that uh, Safer occupies, and that's missing. I, I, I would assume somebody can find it or considering. Yeah, we found it earlier. John found it earlier. Yeah. You, you almost just made this after the fact. You just made his day. <laughs> but at any rate. We're not okay. even talking about it, so. And I did uh, also talk to Gaylene. They are, the Rib Mountain is, is she, her intent is to present it to the town board of Rib Mountain to modify their lease because it's never been signed by Safer to match ours. So there's, and there was some discussion about who's doing the snow plowing, but as far as I'm concerned, that's a moot issue because first off, um, I sure as heck don't want firefighters out there shoveling snow at the municipal or the safety building when we have three occupants in that building. We have the court, we have the fire department, we have the PD. And at the station number one, which is the one in Rebound, they have one occupant and they're the only ones that need it. But their lease agreement also says that they're supposed to, um, Town of is also supposed to shovel, but the, the safer crew goes and, and shovels it anyway, or calls it. But there's also a, an adjustment as far as the routine maintenance that's going to be adjusted, so it says the same thing. At least that's my impression I've got of it. it. It's full approval by the safer board. Uh, Lauren's worked extremely hard on this, probably three, four, four times at least, back and forth. Well, we're version five. And version five, What and what he's doing now is he's bringing it to, to, in front of our board to approve, and then they'll be bringing it, um, 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 Fred will be bringing it towards the Red Mountain board to approve, and then we'll bring it back to Safer for the actual adoption. Right. So and I was going to ask uh, Trustee Minel, did I answer your questions? Yeah. No, I'm fine. Okay. Because okay. I wanted to make sure that I addressed them. And 
it's very similar to the financing and budgeting that's going on with the EMPD. Okay. In fact, it's improved much since we have a joint finance involved in it, so it's improved it a lot. So, and that's I can think. Uh, I had thought we would might have a joint meeting between all three minutes uh, between the two municipalities and the board of directors, but if I think if this board authorizes the signature, that should take care of it. Yep, that'll be it. So right now we are looking for a motion to approve this amended safer charter agreement. I move to approve the second amendment to the charter of South Area Fire and Emergency Response District and uh, empower the board to name a signatory. It's actually Mark. Okay. Then to name Mark as signatory. It'd be Mark and Opal on both sides. Uh, motion by Feeney. Second by Hussein. Uh, any more in the discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Thank you. Yep, thank you for your hard work. 64, Memorandum on Understanding for Nick Avenue. Um, you want to talk first, Mitch? Do you want to just listen to this for a bit? Yes. And then jump up? Okay. A lot of my questions may be answered if yep. okay. he talks first. Talk away. Okay. Can you all hear him? I might not be able to answer anything. You got your speaker uh, right there? Unfortunately. Um, <clears throat> yes, if the board recalls back in January, we had uh, discussed this um, request that was coming through Gary Gert, um, PGA. I guess actually this will be through whatever LLC or some other LLC potentially. Um, but bottom line is just there's a proposal that Nick, East Nick Avenue be connected out to J that would then create a secondary access into that southeast and remote part of the village. Mm -hmm. Now, um, we kind of treated that as a logging road over the years, but there are some properties that are selling. In fact, Gary has purchased some property down there, which I think was explained back in January, um, with intention to, or desire to create a large lot single family subdivision. Uh, also, is um, contemplating or preparing to request a uh, permit or a conditional use permit from the village of Conan Water to um, do uh, non-metallic mining. We have a quarry down in, uh, in, in the southern south of East Nick Avenue within the village of Conan Water. So East Nick Avenue is jointly into the center line uh, to the, from the center line north is in the village of West and the center line south is in the village of Corona Water uh, going to the boundary of the two villages and then to extend to J actually the center line is then on uh, the boundary between the village of Ringo or the town of Ringo and the town of Reed. Um, when we brought this to the board there was a request that we check on who, you know, the, the level of interest from the two townships, uh, the two towns. Um, I did speak both to um, Al Christensen today and to uh, Jack Dolman, who is now the uh, chairman of Reed, chairman of the town of Reed. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things we were considering could be done would be, say, if, they were the, if they'd be agreeable to um, some kind of a special assessment towards property to contribute to this if they're interested in contributing uh, in any way, shape, or form. I guess uh, the sense I have from them is that they really aren't um, part of reads so they would rather make an upfront contribution if they make any. Um, I guess I view this as this being more of a of interest to the, town, to the two villages simply because we have had some incidents in the past where in the spring thaw, we were, in, we were put in a position to have to re repair the road under emergency conditions, really, and keep it in, in a passable condition. So that's our dilemma. We need to keep this street in passable condition. If there are building permits issued, which I don't think we have an ability to deny, um, 
you know, we're going to be in a position to have to keep that road open. Now, how we, how we recover costs that we may incur on this, I suppose, is we still have some ability to, to, to determine, but I think we right now have a proposal where a developer is willing to contribute to making this connection, and I think we want to explore our willingness to contribute to it. Um, and that's where we're. That's where we are with this. Um, and I don't know that we're a whole lot farther. I, I put together some just initial thoughts on what we may need to do in terms of putting items in an agreement. Um, there's a current construction estimate that I guess is in the neighborhood of two hundred thousand dollars. Is that still a valid number? I don't know. I still think we should be getting an updated cost. Um, we still have to get a sense from the village of Cronin I apologize for that. That spelling comes up C O N O M E T R whenever I type in Cronin on my PC, and it automatically reverts that spelling. So every time I got to type Cronin I got to type it twice. So I, I missed that one. So I apologize. It's a different. Uh, I think they're on a different planet. <laughs> That's what it looks like. They're Russian. Yeah. Um, Cronometer. <laughs> so. When I've spoken to Richard Downey, his, his feeling is that perhaps what we want to do is create the ad hoc <clears throat> committee. Okay, because I know that neither one of the village presidents or any particular trustee, even a, less than a quorum of the trustees can make a decision about this. But we still should be talking with them, I think, to get a sense of where they, what they might be willing to do. So Richard's, feeling was that we want to explore maybe just creating an ad hoc committee to have representatives of both villages talk through what they feel they would be willing to do. So I I guess I've put some thoughts on this on this uh, draft of conditions. I think in the end we're going to end up with some kind of a agreement, whether it's a multi-party agreement or a series of agreements between the municipalities and the developer, I guess I'm not sure what that all entails yet, but um, kind of where we are. Um, I think Corner Winter will meet again. They meet tomorrow night, but uh, they will have a village board meeting on the second Tuesday of July. Um, if you were to I guess desire to create an, an ad hoc committee for this, we probably want to do so by resolution. We could put one together to be um, to be on the agenda for the um, uh, open book or the uh, uh, what order is that meeting that's coming up? The uh, board board review board review meeting. It would have to be a separate agenda. Okay. Or review but the board the, of trustees. The board is together that evening. The two hours have to be exclusively devoted to board review. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand. But perhaps they could entertain another item. That I, I, it's my thought. So I don't know. Uh, I, both Gary and Kurt here are uh, here from the developer side. I guess Mitch King has, uh, essentially has some concerns. I would. I would. I, I don't know what those may be. Obviously, we have to look at what the proposed design of the uh, the street would be. I think the, the proposed cross section is with a. 12 inch sand left than 12 inches of crushed aggregate, as I, as I understood the plans that are currently put, put forward right now. Um, Bless you. There is a, I think a, a part of the reason for bringing this forward is that there is a, a wetland permit, wetland crossing permit that's involved in the street extension, uh, which I think the permit's been issued for <coughs> by. DNR or has not been issued, you can maybe clear us up on that. But I think there's there would be some need to get that to take advantage of the permits expiration, <coughs> which is I think later this fall. I think the, 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 the delineation is, is up. Delineation, okay. You get five years for it has to be delineated. Okay. So I don't know, that's kind of a high level overview and I get into a lot of detail, but um, I guess one thing we'd want to talk about would be what what cost share would be would be agreeable to. Um, I think what has been put forward to this point would be uh, you know 50% of the cost by 
the municipalities involved at 50% by the developer. Um, we want to put a cap on that. We, you know, say we, we would only, you know, be willing to go up to a certain number and the developer would be responsible for that. Those are all things that still would need to be hashed out, I guess. So, <clears throat> I'm sorry, my voice is a little crackly here tonight. So, I don't Gary, if I've misrepresented anything here, no, other than, you know, I'm, I, I'm kind of a level like, overview. I'm not sure uh, if anybody got the map of the developer or anything. Well, well that there was that map that was furnished to us before. Mm -hmm. I didn't. <clears throat> Somebody sent me the view at the older information. So we had this map. I'm sorry. Yeah, if there's a map that you guys want to just add it to it, you can pass it along, maybe. What's, what's available for development in that area? A uh, quick question, Administrator Donner. Uh, you said that um, we've been, or that the village has been treating um, part of Nick Ave as a logging road. Is there uh, any difference between a logging road and a typical municipal road? Not really. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, once, we've, uh, I'm not, once we have opened a road, <laughs> I mean, for use. Uh, point of clarification. Yes. In years past, if you tried to get down that road in the springtime, you better have a big end loader to drag you out because it's nothing like like a quivering bowl of jello, a lot of clay in the soil, and very wet. So I got stuck down in the squad car. So <laughs> I think I think it needs to be addressed, and we've talked about that several times. Other meetings. Uh, would it be appropriate, Mitch? Do you want to jump in at any point here yet, or no? Whenever you're okay, well, can I address yeah, go ahead. question about All your right. logging So, according to our attorney's opinion, I think we heard this from our prior village attorney as well. Once we once we have opened the road to the public, we're obligated to keep it passable for people <clears> to <throat> use it, you know, during all seasons. So, I this case, this road has limitations. We can put weight limits on. Uh, which we have right now on, and I guess that's another part of this whole dilemma. Um, we would not be um, supportive of any kind of uh, permit issuance by Cronenwetter without a suitable road or suitable haul route for any kind of a mining operation going down there without, you know, we, again, maybe making this connection because otherwise we're talking about having to improve the whole street. Um, and that's a lot more costly venture. Um, there would be, um, you know, again, there's a proposal to do some development, residential development, that's going to involve some certain construction equipment coming in and out. Um, I guess trying to make this connection under more controlled conditions on a planned basis would be preferable to doing it on some emergency basis. So these are things I guess we want to Keep in mind as we have this discussion and make those points to Crow and Water as well. Uh, in the situation that occurred before, uh, we were actually in a position to keep that road open, Kamichik and Nick, and really for residents in the village of Crow and Water. Uh, we've had kind of this handshake agreement, if you will, where Weston takes care of the maintenance of East Nick. And Corner Water <coughs> takes care of the maintenance on West Nick, which is uh, west of Pine Street. You go to the uh, farther west, if you were to extend this view farther west, it's actually west of uh, Heron. 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 Heron Street. Heron. Okay. Um, but the capital cost if, if we take on any, we need to share in that. Um, and we did an agree in an intergovernmental agreement. I think it was back in around 2012 or so. So we're kind of back, we're in that kind of a same situation in this case. Okay. Donna, uh, according to this, I don't see where is the village of Weston. Village of Weston is uh, Nick Avenue and also what is that, Baron? Uh, and then Coronado continued to J. 
And then total greenhouse that you never need for race There's a boundary. I'll have my plate and we'll show you. This is the village of West. End. Right. Yep. You come Michael. Right here. Michael, can you do it on the board, please, so everybody can see it? Yes. Yeah, so the village of West End. Right. So this is Highway J. Ringle and Reed each extend a quarter mile essentially west of J. So then this part here is Weston. This is Cronenwetter, Reed, and Ringle. So this is stretch of what we're talking about. Correct. Yeah, and that Weston has nothing to do with it. Weston isn't here, but then this road would have to extend out to the, you know, probably somewhere in this part. East Nick. So your question. Well, I would just couldn't recognize from where to where very well village of Aston is involved. Well, if but is, yeah, if so I we start at about a quarter, quarter, first 60 acres. Yeah. yeah, the first 60 acres, yep, to the right. First line. Right there. This, yeah, yeah right there's the boundary between the two. That's the municipal boundaries. Two villages. That's, that's, that's four municipalities the, at that corner. East side of that line is both of them committed crime, and one of them near Bates Point. Mm -hmm. so, so neither of the towns is opposed to the idea of a. I don't see it here. Ended. They just don't want to. Not on board with contribution. Participation. Well, um, they probably feel it will happen regardless if they contribute. So, so and, then, and then no benefit. We can lay, and I guess by law, we can lay out a road in another neighboring municipality. It's happened with us in the village of Rothschild in the past. Uh, and the expansion of Bird Street was an example there. Um, uh, the one by the hospital. Mm -hmm. This is my first. Anyway. So just a question, um, Administrator Garner, are you asking for us to, uh, I know you mentioned about creating an ad hoc committee. Oh, what exactly are you asking for us to do to the, uh, today? Are you asking us to actually uh, authorize you to start formulating ad hoc committee, uh, committee to begin discussions with them? Well, that seems to be the route that the village of Illinois has to go. And unless we have some kind of um, direction from Trustees, it's difficult for us to me, for me to work on this with the village of Corner Letter and with the developer. So I think based on that discussion and if, you know, we could have this put on a you direct that we would like to have an ad hoc committee created, maybe we could put that on a special item for consideration on the 29th. Uh, that answers my question. I was just asking if you were up. Um, so um, you, uh, I guess would we be uh, able to make a motion now? Okay. I'll, make a, I'll, make, I'll go ahead and make a motion to direct the administrator to begin the process to develop oh, a hand. Can I talk before that vote? I'm sorry. Oh. You're right, Mitch. You're right. I still can talk. Yep. After okay. we make a motion. Yeah. So okay. let me make the motion. And okay. We'll go yeah. Okay. Now. So uh, uh, as I was saying, I'll make the motion to direct the administrator to begin the process to uh, uh, develop an ad hoc committee in discussions with Corona, the village of Corona. Is that correct? Yep. Motion by Zong. Second. Second by Zagami on the discussion. Hearing um, none. Wait, sorry. Yeah. Oh, now? Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 It's discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Sorry about that. Just state your name and address for record, Mitch. Yep. Mitch King, 6205 Municipal Street, Weston. Um, I got, I got this information too. Most of my information comes from what I can pick up on the internet, uh, what you present in your packages. Um, I got this um, premise that you got that you were, you, you were just going through, and I got a lot, a lot of questions here. Um, can we go back to that map, Mike? Oh. First of all, on here you got to estimate of construction cost of $200,000. And that is to just cover that piece that is owned by Ringel and Reed, correct? That is what that construction cost is for. That would be to, to extend that road through the Ringel and Reeds out to J. Talking to, I, I have been living in this village for all my life. Lauren even said that that road is in 
bad need of repair. The road itself needs to be constructed from where your mutters happen to destroy the road. That's There's a mile and a half of road that also needs to be constructed here. Way up by where them three houses are that are in Cronenwetter. That's where the road base stops and that's where the logging road begins. There is a mile and a half of road that also needs to be figured in here. And there's not no numbers whatsoever in the last two meetings, even talking about reconstructing that mile and a half. You want that exit to go out to J, but you're only presenting the $200,000 that is need to be spent. What about the rest of it? There's another four or $500,000 that needs to be spent between Cronenwetter and Weston. And it's not being mentioned at all at any point. Well, you're right, it's not being mentioned. We understand that that is something that needs to be addressed over there. Okay, then, then, okay. then staff should be bringing that to the board so the board can understand this. I've been in two meetings and not once has that been addressed. Um, that's one point. And it's being presented that we need another exit out, out of that street, okay, for safety reasons. It's a dead end street. There are four houses, or did I count five? Five houses that are on that street from Shorey Avenue all the way out. I started working for the village of Weston back in, in 1985. Four of those houses were there then. There is one new one since then. They've never had a problem, they've never asked. They're not here tonight asking for another exit out. Um, so I'm wondering how come this dead end street is so important? You just approved a preliminary plat with a dead end street with six residents on that. There's a dead end street that you just approved tonight. Um, there are two people that I know for sure that are on this board of trustees that live on a single access subdivision. One of the police chiefs, ex-police chiefs lives in a subdivision that only has one exit out and he's been on that street. I don't know, Lauren, I don't know how, but a long time. Barb Emmerling, she lives on Willard Street. She lives on a single access road. So is this a real importance to get out to Jay as much as staff is presenting this to be? I really, I mean, I've got a list of, you just um, put all the Swiderski apartments on the end of Callan, on Callan Avenue. How many apartment buildings did you just put in there on a single access street? That was just done months ago. Um, Ryan Street to the north, Swiderski apartments, a bunch of apartments down there on a single access. We have a lot of lives on single access roads. And now there's only five on here and staff is recommending this is an emergency and we need to get this in. I don't think taxpayers should be spending this amount of money on, on a, first of all, there's a mile and a half of road that was never presented to you guys. That's a lot of money coming up that needs to be rebuilt. Um, so then turnarounds, I mean, for the last, I don't know how many years, garbage trucks been driving back there, the plow trucks, I plowed that way back when. Trucks were able to turn around back there and go back out. Yes, it's a logging road, we started it, so John Plischke could go back there. We were putting gravel on there so he could hunt back there way back when. Um, but to me, staff is not presenting this case the way it should be presented. Um, and and I, mean, I guess I'm wondering why is that? Is that because of the, the guy that's trying to, to get this through? Is he because he's one, a, a member of your board on the planning commission? Is he one of you, is he one of you? I mean, I went through this with Dean Zuliger. Dean Zuliger took me to the cleaners way back when. And Keith, Mr. Donner, you know this for a fact because you were involved in it. Um, but it's... In what respect? <clears throat> you sat right, you were, you were underneath him and all the, dis, the arguments and the disagreements. Um, you, you, but 
Dean Zuliger is gone, and I thought that type of mentality was gone, and we were out in the open here, and we're supposed to be presenting things at staff's position to present everything to all you guys. I don't think that's being happened here. Um, I talked, to, I just so happened to own land in Weston. I own land in Cronenwetter. I will be at Cronenwetter's meeting. I own land in Reed. I'm going to be at Reed's meeting. Um, I do not own land in Ringo. I talked to Al Christensen after, after Keith called him this afternoon. Um, and that is very true. Ringo and Reed do not want to participate in cost to spend that through, nor do they want assessments on their property owners. And I'm pretty sure Keith was. Right, I guess I'm. I, and then you, you presented that right, and that's. Have I been untruthful in what I said about that? that about that? No, you, I, I've, I've said that. But I'm saying the numbers are not being presented the way the rest of you should know, because there's a mile and a half, that whole thing, that's a mile and three quarters that needs to be built. And that's a lot of money. Um, so what's going to happen between the the Ringel and the Reed line? And I guess where that, if if the gravel pit's going to go in, okay, then, but have them build that road to a standard that needs to support. You just can't put standard culvert pipes in there and think that the hundred thousand pound machines that the crushers are going to go through and. Um, you need to build it at a county standard, and it needs to be blacktop. That amount of trucks going out uh, hit the gravel pit and heading towards Jay, that's going to be a washboard. Every time it rains, it's going to be a nightmare. So whoever is going to be paying for this, there needs to be blacktop added into this numbers. So being presented that this is only about a $200,000, it's, it's false. It, it's not, that's not the point. Um, what else do I got here? The, the $90,000 um, carrot or is it, I don't know, I, I guess I shouldn't say bribe. I don't, I don't want to talk into that, but I'm going to say a carrot that the PGA is dangling out there that they'll, but, but it, it is labor and materials. It's $90,000 worth of labor and materials. Okay, has anybody thought about how this is going to work out? How is Gary going to get his crusher in there to make that material to build that road? He needs that road to get in there to, to start his pit, but the road isn't there. The, nobody, the thought process here is how can he donate? He can't even get in there to make the material, make one wheelbarrow full of material there. So it can't be a $90,000 labor and material donation or carrot or whatever he's dangling, dangling out in front there. It has to be a, a check. Mitch, all we have done tonight is establish an ad hoc committee between two. Well, and then and this is the information that needs you're, to be presented to Mitch, you're, everybody. You're, you're proposing that it's finished and all this stuff has to be. No, I, I'm proposing. All I'm going to do is talk between two municipalities. Okay. And then this is the information that needs to be talked about yes. and brought up. It has not been brought up at any point here yet, at any meeting that I've been in. Yes. It has been brought up. So, I, well, then it's just things I want you to think about. Okay. All right. And thank you. So, so thanks a lot. All right, thank you, Mitch. Uh, All right, so um, uh, Mr. President, yeah. uh, Mr. Gerns would uh, mm -hmm. would like to oh, address, address the board. We're, we're, we've actually we're going to go as far as we are today. I mean, we we did an ad hoc committee. There's nothing else on the agenda that we need to know about until we start that discussion. Okay. And when we start having those discussions. As I would we, imagine you'll be there. What I want to do is make it clear that we did have a meeting at the Village of Corona mm -hmm. with all four municipalities, and we discussed the reasons why we don't, <clears throat> what the purposes of putting a subdivision, and how not to cross the existing wetlands that are there or the existing road that is saturated. Um, and that would be something that needs to be brought down or built in the future as more development gets brought through. This is a way to get another access point out, out, out onto Highway J. For, for development, and we sit in meetings when we talk about how do we get more development in our community. This was one of the reasons why we learned at this as well. So, yep. 
Thank you. Welcome. We're good. Uh, Nick. Uh, Sixty-five. Focus on energy. Okay, and, hold on. No. Uh, yes, we do. Uh, I thought we did. Oh, we, we did. That was discussion. So we have a motion by Zong and a second by Zagami. Any more on the discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. So carried. Uh, focus on energy. Is this a long one? No. Okay. Sixty-five. Focus on energy incentive agreements for municipality facilities. <laughs> I move to approve the incentive agreement with focus on energy for the municipal facility project. They're giving yeah. us money. Second okay. by White, second by Song. Anything on the discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. 66. Uh, Mr. President, yep. uh, I have a conflict and will be excused myself for the duration okay. of debate and vote. Thank you. Um, I, I, are you here for this? Is this what you've been waiting for all night? Yes. I'm so I'm sorry. If I would have realized that, I would have brought that up farther. I mean, for you to have to sit through all this, I'm really sorry. Okay. So we're we're finally at the point that you want to hear. Okay. okay. All right. 66. <laughs> reconsider requirement for sidewalks in the Crestwood Acres subdivision. Um, uh, Keith or Michael want to go first, or you want me to talk a little bit? I'll start. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, Any way you want to by handle. by myself and by the phone calls and the emails that I'm receiving, um, and I and I I'm going to submit the three here. Um, they're all basically the same. Um, over the weekend, I received. Uh, I might as well just read these real quick. I received one from a Blanche Jensen, uh, 6104 Rodney, along with lots of telephone calls, and I've also been out there the last two weeks. Uh, normally at night, uh, you know, the neighbors are out talking, and I just kind of. Kind of drive up to them. I, I think sometimes I scare some of them, but I, I just introduce who I am and want to have some discussion with them. Um, but um, let's see. This uh, Blanche Jensen writes, uh, "Thank you for reopening the sidewalk issue. I have been praying that the city changes their minds on that and does not put them in. Also, I knew the city was going to change Douglas Street, but I did not realize the impact would have on some of the residences. Is there any way the street can be left as it is? It puts quite a hardship on the on at least two homeowners." We are we are already losing one neighbor because of the construction. I would have liked to come to the meeting, but I can't get to my car on the main road without fear of botting me out again. Lance Jensen. Um, another one I received uh, from a Judy Tesh. I understand there's a meeting tonight at 6 p.m. regarding the installation of sidewalks in our neighborhood. I am against this. Sidewalks are not necessary, and they were not part of the original plan. I can't attend tonight, but I wanted to voice my opinion. Judy Tesh, 6206. Um, along the same lines, I received one here from Gwen Heggie and Michael and I and Keith have had uh, s uh, several conversations with her. Uh, it's quite lengthy. It's all under the same uh, guidelines. Uh, but let me just read this last uh, portion. I believe she's on Rodney. I, I don't right. Okay. I don't know if I have the address here. I don't think she finishes it with an address. Uh, but it's on those lines. Um, uh, many of what Gwen has brought up in this email is uh, uh, Michael has talked to, and so have I. And I think Keith has been part of too. So I have these all received the, on this last couple of days, and I'll have them submitted to uh, Sherry um, for the record. Um, so we voted on this, and and from a bird's eye view and in paper, it it looks fine, and. Um, I, I got to tell you, um, I'm a little jealous of this neighborhood because they're so they're so close, and maybe they become closer over this issue. Um, I have never lived in a neighborhood where everyone knows where everybody lives. You know, I, I asked, I couldn't find Gwen's house, but everybody I asked knew where she lived. I couldn't get down it because the road was uh, torn up so well, like it's going to be. Um, but everybody knows everybody, and and the conversations I'm having. Everybody refers to everybody, all their neighbors on the three or four streets back there. A lot of them have lived there a long time. I, I uh, stopped at a corner up on Douglas. I, I don't know exactly which, I, Randy J, um, is it, it's uh, Rodney, and then what's the one closer to Camp Phillips? Um, Kirk. Randy uh, Kirk J. is the closest to Camp Phillips. It goes Randy J, Rodney, Kirk. Okay, so it's Randy J and Douglas. And two gentlemen were there. One was the, the, the property owner. I believe one was across the street and then down one. And uh, as I was driving up, I had talked to uh, um, a, a gal uh, about two houses uh, north of them. And as I came up to them, their 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 uh, road, their um, yard was pulled back, and 
And I, I got out and I just said, Where, where's the sidewalk here? And they showed me where the sidewalk was going to be. And I, I'm, I'm just going to tell you, uh, on this property and along with other ones, I was uncomfortable standing there that close to that house as a sidewalk walker. And I would feel the same way if I lived in that house and I saw someone walking by my house that close. So after a lot of this, um, I, I then contacted Michael and Keith and I just said, hey, you know, I, I think we just need to talk about this. I, I think we need to bring it back up. Uh, it's not a through, through street. It's this, this neighborhood was designed 40 or 50 years ago and it wasn't designed for sidewalks. You know, there's no race way through there. Um, at the same time, they brought up, I believe, some land or some earth issues that we have there, some clay that has to be removed. I, th I think it's in this packet or was part of it. And, uh, and uh, the, you know, just the, um, the passion of the discussion that we're having over these issues, a lot of the sidewalks, we're not charging for these sidewalks, but, it, but it's just going to change the whole landscape of this. So in my discussions with Keith and Michael um, and, and some others, um, I, we just started talking about, you know, should we look at our ordinances? And I, I really want to handle this as separately tonight, but in the future, should we be looking at more um, what we call the roads or the, the pathways that are our more materials and collectors? Yeah, you know, collector streets. Should those be the ones that have the sidewalks and not these intimate, you know, neighborhoods that are so tight? I mean, look at a lot of the neighborhoods that we don't have sidewalks. I mean, my neighborhood doesn't, um, you know, uh, back in where, you know, farther deep north in there, what, what they sometimes refer to Cavity Hill, your neighborhood doesn't have sidewalks. There's a lot of them that don't. And, and I know we're trying to push this connectivity and, and the sidewalks. And uh, I just don't know if we're doing the right thing. And, and this neighborhood has voted 81%, 81% against sidewalks in, and they're free. They're free. They don't have to pay for any of this. And they still said no to 81%. So I, I'm just asking, you know, that I think we should look at this as a one-off and, and then maybe look at our ordinances in the future for maybe something different. I, I just, uh, this takes an awful lot of energy out of all of us, especially staff, on uh, trying to make this work. And uh, I know it sounds great. It looks great on paper, but holy mackerel, you know. So then I go, uh, as I'm leaving Crestwood one day, and I'm, I, I'll quit talking here in a second, I'm driving by Weston School, and I, I wanted to drive in on that new that area that had all this road and, and everything. And and I'm going, wow, this this makes sense. I mean, there's plenty of room here. The sidewalks far enough away. I think the roads are a little tighter. They they're they're not as wide and going into that. You know, they could park on the ditches and everything. And I and I uh, there was a woman there walking, and I, I'm sure I, I drove her crazy, but I introduced myself right away from the car and. I said, what do you think? And she lives there, she loves them, she loves them. But it's not six feet or eight feet from their house. And uh, she said it was hell going through the construction. And, and I know Michael felt you had many neighborhood deals out there and, and you took care of a lot of that action because I heard about it. Um, but that was a different case. I, I think we could actually do a lot of it in, in, uh, back in, uh, in Sandy and, and it would be beautiful. But in this particular neighborhood, I just, I don't think they're needed. They're not wanted. And I, I just think we would, uh, they would endure a, a heck of a hardship by this much right away and this much sideways. So that's that's my thoughts. I don't know what the rest of you think, um, but I, I would like to bring this up uh, for a vote that we reconsider. And uh, I, I, Keith and, uh, um, go ahead. I, I just sorry. have one thing to say, because you're so thorough. Mm -hmm. Everything you've said is true. But when winter comes and a lot of us are old people, mm -hmm. you expect us to keep the sidewalks clear and mm -hmm. we're not going to be able to do that. Right. I know. There's a lot of streets and we, a lot of sidewalks we have now in this community that aren't cleared yeah, it's gonna correctly. Be, it's going to be a hardship for mm -hmm. us. It really will. And uh, everything else seems to be very nice. We love to make uh, our grass grow all mm -hmm. over the street. So we, we have a little different area. Mm -hmm. And uh, we would be happier if we didn't have sidewalks. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to grab the name? I think. Uh, I'm sorry, your name? Ruth Hockberger. Ruth Hockberger? This is my husband, Jack. Okay, and you reside and at? We live, we've been there 50 years on Kirk Street. We were the very first house. Built. Okay. 
Congratulations. What address? 6311. Thursday. Thank you very much. So, um, I, I, I think, um, go ahead. I think Michael and Keith might add a little bit here. Go sure. ahead. Um, I, I don't have any objections to um, uh, re 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 reviewing this. Um, I guess I would, um, you know, I, I would just want us to be thorough with, um, you know, the exceptions, you know, all the exceptions on what, on our policies, our ordinances here, and make sure that we're um, being thorough and actually uh, listing which neighborhoods would be, uh, you know, what would what would determine, uh, what criteria would determine an exemption from having a sidewalk. So if we can do that, I would be supportive of this as well. Okay, I, it, it, go ahead. No, I, I agree 100%. We gotta be consistent across the board. I my. My uh, wife grew up on East Everest, on the west side of East Everest Avenue, so I've walked this neighborhood. You know, we've been married, you know, 35 years, so um, it, it's an isolated neighborhood. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it, but it's, it's very it, tight. Yeah, it's, it, it's somewhat isolated, and I'm, you know, very concerned about protecting people with the sidewalks. Mm -hmm. It's just that's just mm -hmm. where I've been, I guess. But um, I don't have a problem reconsidering it. On, on this? I, I think what we need to do is task uh, Keith and Michael, probably predominantly Michael uh, and Jen probably, um, is to look at our village, look at our community and establish these, um, what do, I, I, I'll never remember to name these connective streets or? Yeah, so these, I, you know. Is it collectors? I want to jump ahead yeah. here. Yeah, and I'm sure. Go ahead. You know, the, um, our urban area, our metro, our, the Wasa MPO, um, you know, through with, in conjunction with the DOT, when they put out their traffic counts every few years, they um, update the streets in the village or in the Wausau metro area and identify them as the arterials and collector streets. Um, and that's depending on then on how we get grant funding for certain projects moving forward. Mm -hmm. But uh, so, you know, if we look at our village, you know, it's maybe a little hard to see on the map here, but you know, the yellow is our collector street. So, you know, this is Jelnick Avenue, um, Birch Street, Community Center Drive, um, Mesker Street. You know, those are the collectors, our arterials are, you know, Camp Phillips, um, Weston Avenue, um, Alderson Street, um, again, Jelnick, Ross. So I guess that kind of lays that framework of where the, you know, what we would consider the busy, you know, high traffic, high volume streets are. You know, I guess as we tried to talk about this, uh, I think I included in here. At one point in time, um, when I kind of first started here, there was a kind of a sidewalk and trail map where, you know, we tried, the village tried to identify, you know, the parks, the schools, um, kind of the, I think we refer to them as third places that people would um, traditionally walk to and from. So, you know, connecting your busy roads then to your schools, parks, you know, maybe retail shopping centers and kind of getting that pedestrian trailway to and from those areas, you know, so this was a map that we had back in 2011 that kind of guided, um, you know, future sidewalk on projects where, you know, Newport Avenue by Kennedy Park in 2012 when that was redone that had sidewalk but it was identified on this map as having sidewalk. Yep. And similarly, Alderson Street was as well. So, um, you know, and talking with other communities, you know, this is somewhat of how, uh, you know, Village of Rothschild has a set area that they said, this is going to be our sidewalk area. And then this, you know, then the rest of the village, they say is a, a no sidewalk area. Um, talking with the city of Wassa, it sounds like they take everything on a case by case basis. And, you know, they, as part of the, um, capital improvement plan, they identify that as what, what are the planned improvements on this street? So, you know, in 2016, when we, or 15, 16, when we changed our ordinance and we kind of had the, the blanket, uh, every reconstructed street gets sidewalk, um, I guess, you know, it, it, like many things, maybe as we are finding with our zoning code, it, at, at first blush on paper, it, it maybe sounds good, it makes sense, and then in as we start implementing things, we start finding that maybe there's not as great of a one size fits all solution. So, um. okay. So I, I hope that answers some of your question, you know, that we not just look at this, but then we move forward and look at, uh, you know, a broader picture of our whole village and decide on 
how to go after that. And, you know, Jen's not here tonight, but she had a comment, I think, and Keith expressed it to me that, you know, just what you said, we've got to just be consistent to some degree. So, and I, I know Lauren would feel the same way. Uh, we change? We can go continuously against our own. Mm -hmm. We would change our ordinance. We have to. Yes. We can that, and that's, vote that's here what Michael first. was talking about. Yep. Well, we vote here first, then we want to go back and mm -hmm. against and fix mm -hmm. the ordinance. Yep. I think we fix the ordinance, then we vote on it. I think you're more comfortable. Well, I, I, I would too, but there's a certain point here. There's a critical point here that we've got to give, we've got to give some closure to this uh, in this neighborhood. I, I and I, I don't think it'll hurt if we decide that tonight and then correct that ordinance. Well, here's the thing: there's so Mr. X sitting out there and he wants to sign that. I can guarantee you we can make make us to change our votes because the ordinance said. You have to have it, we vote not to have it, and that gentleman gonna come and say, why don't you follow? So, I, I agree with you. If it doesn't fit there, you shouldn't do it. <coughs> That's all it is to I am all for the ordinance change, absolutely, so, and following the ordinances. I am. So who should, um, Trustee Zagami, you're, you're recommending that the proper step, or the proper procedure would be to change the ordinance and then change and then for the board to make the decision. That's the correct way to do it. Yes. In my opinion. It, it is the correct way, and but it, it would not give closure to that 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 uh, uh, neighborhood right now. That that neighborhood needs closure right now. They need to know they don't wanna can you imagine waiting 30 more days or however many more days to get this to that point? You can tell the contractor not to build it and stop on that portion of the project. And you can fix it and change it. In, in essence, then, we just did it the way you don't want to do it. If we just told the contractor not to do it, why wouldn't that stop another future person saying, well, wait a minute, you had the contractor stop. I'm just saying this is a simple gesture to this neighborhood, and then we can move on and fix. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just asking for that. Um, at this point, what's your pleasure? Mark, one now. Can I have a comment? You live there? No, I don't. I'd rather not then. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do I hear a motion? Uh, hearing no motion. Oh, I'll make I'll okay. make a motion to um, skip putting on the sidewalk um, in the Crestwood Acres neighborhood. Um, and directing staff to come back with modifications to our municipal code, but also addressing the items that you had up there, Mike, but also addressing whether it's an isolated neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, I guess that's my, my motion. Thank you. Do I hear a second? Um, for the sake of discussion, I'll second that. Thank you. All right, so we have a motion and a second on the discussion. So um, I'm just trying to uh, to, re -under uh, to understand the motion here a little bit be uh, better here. Um, your, your motion is to basically put a stop to the continued discussion, the, the continued construction of the sidewalk, but then not necessarily stopping the, um, not necessarily stopping, you know, not necessarily um, revisiting this, but allow giving time to staff to bring back uh, changes. It's I want them to change. I want yes. the changes to be brought back, but I want to stop it on this neighborhood. Because I, I've driven by this. Yeah. It, it, I mean, every day I drive by it twice a day, and I, I see the you know, the construction going on. We're going to reach a point pretty quick here where it's, they're going to have to do you know do something with the sidewalk. I don't think we want to spend the money there. I think it's a waste of money, and I don't think we need it. And I think that um, staff can come back with something a little bit better than even what we had up there. I mean, Mike put that up. Um, I don't. I don't know if you saw that or not, but but he did put up what the sidewalks that were isolated on that map before. But I think we should take into consideration this is this neighborhood is really isolated. You got the trailer stuff to the north that doesn't you know doesn't come you know this way, and you have. You know the um, commercial stuff to the south, and you got the main the main artery there. I I just don't think that trying to put this sidewalk in there, you're you're not 
you're just not going to be able to make sense out of doing that. And I think from a timing standpoint, I think we should err on stopping the sidewalks going in right now. I, I completely agree with you, Shane, completely. At this one time, just a, a little bit of a reversal, but completely agree that we have to change them and then follow them. Absolutely. I'm not, I'm not seconding. I'm not trying to change it. No, I, I don't, I don't I, that's not what I'm trying to say here. I, 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 what I'm, the only concern I have, I guess, is that is about procedures or process wise. I, I mean, if we were to do the, put it um, from the way I'm understanding this motion here, um, after they finish developing the policies, they would have to bring it back to the board here to approve the policy, the, the ordinance. Um, and then would we have to then vote on the decision again to stop this moving, you know, stop the uh, stopping the um, building of the sidewalks again? Or, or, or I, because I mean, I, if, if we're going to do that, then I would rather go to what the motion that had, uh, that was in here, where it is said that, um, we will stop the building. We will stop building the sidewalk contingent based off of the ordinance that was developed. You know, no, I, I, I guess that's, I like. I like that. Just one yeah. clarification. I, just, I, contingent. I like that. So it has to be done, like Hussein said. Yeah. I'm sorry, Lauren. That's right. Uh, I checked the the ordinance. It's it's under 74.6.06. It's in Figure 6.06, Print One, and they're talking about Note Nine, which is which is it, what it doesn't exist yet it doesn't exist right yes yeah. so the only change in that in section 74.6.06 would be added a note to this table nine okay okay uh, that's a question with it how far is the contractor uh they're working on sewer main right now on uh, kirk street so, um, so he hasn't even started but he did clear the area. They right? Yeah, I mean the all the all the grass back. Yeah, there. the topsoil has been stripped. The trees have been cut. Um, so, you know, a lot of that work has been done already. Okay. But uh, yeah, they're working on the underground uh, sewer water lines right now. So I mean, mm -hmm. we got. But as soon as WPS is on Rodney Street right now, um, they'll they they're supposed to finish up this week. So next week. Um, the contractor would move back to Rodney Street to install storm sewer. So that should take about a week. And then was that put us right around the 4th of July week is when the contractor would start, you know, building the road up. And usually when they build the road is when you, know, you start working on your sidewalk build too. So um, I guess potentially they could start grading and um, making the sidewalk uh, subgrade, you know, before the next uh, board meeting. So um, I just want a clarification, Trustee White. Can you explain that a little bit to me again? It's been a long meeting here. <laughs> so I, I need some I, I need some clarification on this. It still requires a change in the ordinance. Yep. Because it's up to all of our ordinances, in particular, as an example, our zoning code, when we have tables like this, it's changed by by amending our ordinance. The tables and setbacks, all those tables are changed by or by amending the ordinance. So all it would take is uh, uh, to add item nine to this table in chapter 74. Okay. Um, so, yep. so I guess um, I, I, would, uh, I would withdraw my, uh, I believe I could say it withdraw my second, which would then make the motion no longer valid. And then we can substitute, we can do a create another motion. Am I, is this a right, is this a follow procedure? Um, so that right. he, could, he could put in contingent on making you that change. Withdraw, you can withdraw your second and the motion has to be withdrawn and then restated. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll withdraw my second. I'll withdraw my second. Okay. So then uh, I guess um, the, I, if I recall, I saw a, the suggested motion in here. I'm just trying to pull it up here. Um, which was um, make uh, I'll, I'll make a motion to uh, let's see here. Uh, it's right there. Is that this? Oh, yep. it's right there. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll read the right one. I'll, I'll make a motion uh, to recommend the revisions to the sidewalk plans uh, for the Crestwood Acres neighborhood reconstruction to construct sidewalks on both sides. 
Oh, oh no, that's not it. It's got a whole list of them. If you read the whole thing. Page 597. This was a suggestion, I guess, based on looking at the condition. Right. But it still has some, this particular suggestion still has sidewalks in it. Mm -hmm. Right. That's it's what I was confused. Partially in the neighborhood, but not. Not all of them. Your point is is to withdraw the sidewalks from this neighborhood Correct. contingent contingent on adding uh, uh, bullet point nine. Yes. Sister I'll make that motion. There we go. That's a lot easier. Hey, um, um, excuse me, what's your name? <laughs> Sherry. Sherry. I'm just trying to get her to smile. Okay. Catch that? Yes. Okay. Yep. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Second by Vanel. Any more on the discussion? I'm sorry, Michael. Just a quick question. So is that just on every street? Yes, um, this whole project. The whole project. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, any more on the discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Thank you all very much. Very, yeah. very much. After. Thank you. Yep. Is, Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. May I have to get a hold of the Yes, yeah, Sam. Uh, I've already gave him a heads up that there may be some. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> okay. We could always have a special meeting to approve the ordinance. I'm there. Call me. I'll be here. I'll bring some. Stay with smile. I'll bring. I'll bring. I'll bring I'll do it. When I have an agenda. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't really have to. No. Abstain. Not really. Well, yeah. because it has a direct impact yes. on where I live and or a, a, a okay. relative, close relatives. Okay. okay. Right. Okay. I do have to recuse myself. Okay. We figured this out once or twice. Yes. 67, uh, appointment of alternate one and alternate two plan commission members. Um, this is the point that Keith talked about. Um, I just, we can certainly do this at a separate time. Um, I will be attending all these meetings who Shane asked the last time if he should have stayed. And I said, at this point, you really didn't have to. Um, but I, I would like to recommend, and I know it's kind of the cheaper way out, but I'd like to recommend uh, Hussein Zagami and myself as the two alternates. If you're not comfortable with that, uh, we have another name that we could put up and that would be uh, Dave Deason. Uh, he has not been contacted yet, but I would contact him or Keith could or somebody or Jen could, whatever. I would, I would second that motion. Well, I, I, I don't yeah. want to make that I mean, I, I, I'll make a yeah. motion. You, you can make the motion. I can. Yeah. Well, I'd rather not. I, I'll make a motion for Maloney oh. and, and who should okay. to, to be I, I, I want you to disclose who's one and two, because it makes a difference. Can we alternate one and two, or is one always in when they need it and in two? Uh, I mean, what if he can't make it and I can, or I can't and he can? And uh, Hussein, are you just, okay with this? Yeah, sure. Okay. okay. I, I know, but I, I kind of asked you and I didn't ask you. No, okay. No, so you guys, I, I do. I do. Have, he, he wants to be on there. Yeah, go ahead. Just a question, though. In, in our ordinances, it states that the chair of a committee can appoint trustees yes. to fill mm -hmm. until we have quorum. Mm -hmm. So my, I guess my question is, A, just making sure the rest of the board knows that, and B, because the because uh, the head of the committee is already empowered to appoint trustees, do we want to bring more citizens into it and um, and uh, have more citizen input? Well, I think this he's is a commission. This is a commission number one, and then I think he's got some background to. Because um, he actually researched this and found this be because I think it's just so crucial for this commission. Yeah. So just a point of order, I believe there was a motion. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. Correct. Oh. So, so then we should um, we should probably get that taken care of. Okay. Uh, however, uh, Trustee Minel did not stipulate who was one and who was two. I, I was mm -hmm. saying one and two. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we'll, with the intention of allowing them to work out who's available for the meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I, I will second that motion. All right, we have a motion by Manel and a second by Zong. Any more on the discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. Attorney referrals. Hearing none, we're moving into closed session. Uh, I move uh, to go into closed session under 1985, parent one, parent C, to discuss the 2021 employee compensation for director team as well as under 
parent one, parent G for the Wausau Central Wisconsin Convention and Visitor Bureau contract. Uh, motion by Feeney. You need a second? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Mitch. Second, Second by Manel. Roll call vote. Roll call vote, please. Feeney? Aye. Maloney? Aye. Manel? Aye. White? Aye. John? Aye. Ngami? Aye. Yep, you get to go home. You get to go home. Take me with you. 